episode 56 moral liberty got a title this week almost didn't have a title this week <laughs> you see y'all understand don't tell your business what you mean don't tell my business <laughs> some people don't want to actually be a part of it but we'll see how that goes who these some people you <laughs> <laughs> tell a nigga give me damn intro nope anyway <clears throat> how was y'all week man hopefully it was good um not going on <laughs> sad news actually it's sad news for some people <laughs> that's, that's unfortunately <laughs> true um i'm fortunate but uh certain people they've had tragedy but like i said um it's been a, a a range of things that happened this week end of the week something just happened that was unexpected i guess we can get right into well, it the beginning uh, of the week something happened that was leak that was unexpected yeah that too so a lot of unexpected things we should have named it that <laughs> the unexpected <laughs> oh now oh now you you see uh, one of these times <laughs> when we finally decided to just show uh our face and stuff on this go live with this y'all gonna see the games he be playing with. <laughs> yeah anyway let me go ahead and show it <sighs> there's a lot of people that see this and said ha there's some that saw it and said, it's unfortunate. Um, it's unfortunate for the, the family of him, his, you know, his mom. I think uh, I think his mom and his, uh, I think it said his sister um, verified the death of Kevin Samuels. Um, I think that was two days ago. He passed away. Was it two days? The day for yesterday or yesterday? It was yesterday. You sure it was yesterday? Yesterday. Okay, um. They verified his death after it was trending on Twitter for like, it was trending for, it's still trending right now. Um, Obviously, he had a lot of supporters. He had a lot of people that disagree with him. Um, He was controversial <laughs> to some, although it was like, anyway. Um, Kevin Samuels, when I saw this trending, I thought, oh, he got COVID or something. No, and that ain't what you said. Go ahead, say what I said. <laughs> you said it was fake. Oh, let me finish. Okay. I thought it was COVID or something, and they just got on there just saying he did. Just to be, or, to be vicious. Or I also said, it's, I've seen people play like they did to get attention. Okay. There's a plenty <laughs> of people on the internet who they'll disappear from social media for a day and a half or two, and somehow it'll leak that they did. And you remember when Kelly Price was missing? <laughs> see, <laughs> see, I didn't want to get no names. You gave her a name. <laughs> People getting kidnapped. Remember what Tashina? What's her name? Um, Tashina. Not Tashina. I'm sorry. I'm saying the wrong person. Oh, Tisha. Tisha said she almost got kidnapped, and then they released the footage and <laughs> said she didn't always. That ain't, she over exaggerated what happened. Sorry, Tashina. Yeah, sorry about that. It was that. Tisha Applehead, <laughs> Gina. <laughs> so, you know, people do fake this stuff to get some attention. So I didn't know. I saw it was trending for so long. I was like, okay, at this point, he would. Come out, Come out and, and say, say something. And you know that it's it's YouTube platforms uh, that have videos. Uh, sad news, such and such. Yeah, it's yeah. literally a channel. I know. If y'all on YouTube, that's a channel that every day they say somebody dead. That they ain't dead. Do that. I'm sure y'all have seen that channel. <laughs> I don't know how it hasn't been flagged down. They get all these views and nobody ain't well, flagged. Well, no. Them. Sometimes, you know, people be like, I mean, they should have just stopped by now. They know that they it's They just not. do it and they still get views. So I ain't mad at them. If you dumb enough to go to this channel, knowing but that. But that's kind of sick to be lying about people's death, saying that they can't. Now, I would. We got was, some sick individuals out here. There was a weird one where they made a video months prior saying that Nick Cannon had lost a child. And then in the future, he actually lost a child. That was crazy. Maybe they predicting. Okay. They're predictors. But as you can see here, Kevin Samuel, YouTube with 1.4 million subscribers has died, his mother said. You could tell whoever wrote this article did not know who he was. <laughs> that everything in this article is the stuff. You just would get from um, a certain side <laughs> of the Kevin Samuels controversy. Yeah. Everything. Oh, he was a YouTuber that had uh, controversial opinions on black women. That's it. That's that, I, well, I don't know why they say black women because he had all. Uh, uh, we, we're not going to play those games. He obviously <laughs> was directed towards his commentary was directed towards black women and the black community in general. But because he went from his his platform went from being about black men to he found out oh talking about talking to black women get you more exposure more money because they're so more. So was he using black women? 
to get attention for his platform. Well, he was saying the same thing to them. He said to the black dudes. The difference is there was no controversy when he said it to the black dudes. They just took it on the chin. Like, you go back and listen to some of those videos to the dudes. He said some harsh, harsh stuff to some of these dudes. So you think that his his commentary was directly directed only to black women? Yeah, most of it. I mean, some things you can kind of, a lot of things you say can be applied to different demographics. But his clear all core Person, people he was talking to, at least when he started talking towards women particularly. So he wanted that viewership from black women. I don't know if it was just a viewership. I, well, so you, I think you're trying to make the point, was he being fake? Yes, was he being fake? I don't think he was being fake. I wasn't beating around the bush too. I was leading up. Because I think he was saying the same listen, thing. Listen, I don't listen. In the black community, we don't, where I'm coming from, we don't talk shit about the dead. Yeah. If you don't say it when they're alive. Don't say it when they did. Don't, don't say what they did. The only thing I'm going to say is, um, we sit here and we say his commentary was directed Hold on, towards... Before you go, I know you're going. Let me just read some of this first. Okay. Uh, Samuel's views on dating and relationships was made people, many people on social media may felt were an attack on black women often sparked outrage. Kevin Samuel's a YouTuber. Like, can you imagine being 57, you die, and they just call you 56. A, no, he's 57. I he saw, was 56. It said 57 in one article, so it, it don't matter. Okay. Can you imagine living that long... Which is still young. That's and, very young still. And then passing and then you're just a YouTuber. I wouldn't say he's just a YouTuber. No, I'm saying this, this, this one saying you could tell whoever wrote this article. Oh. Don't know who he is. It's just like, yeah, this YouTuber. It's like I mean to the people in his life, it's like, damn, he's just a YouTuber. No, he's at the, I think he was at the peak of his success. Meaning in YouTube I think he was we we always said we felt like eventually he was gonna get a talk show. Yeah, at some point, probably will. At some point, and I think he was trying that on YouTube. Yeah, he, was he was experimenting on the couch thing, and then maybe that's just when he was in Miami. I think he was just when he changed. Uh, and then Serena. he kind of went back to his. I think he was just because he was in Miami. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Um, he died. His mother confirmed NBC News rumors of his death first circulated on social media Thursday night. His mother, Beverly Samuels Birch, declined to release details about uh, what happened. She said she learned of her son's death from social media. That's that's, well, that's typically what happens. Now imagine as a mother, I you go on social media and find out you hear a room your son is and seeing the stuff they were saying. There's like one thing when he's alive and they saying the stuff. It's like whatever. I'm surprised TMZ didn't have the news first. Yeah, that's surprising. Yeah, they are the, you know. Yeah, we know what they are. Yeah, we know who they really work for. But I couldn't imagine seeing the that. Massad. I can't imagine when you see that <laughs> on social media as a parent. It's one thing when they're alive, but when they're when they're gone, it's like damn. It's like, <laughs> it didn't turn down. At all. It got even more vicious. Like, all right. Uh, his mother, I already read that. That was a terrible thing from social media to put uh, to put that out. I didn't even know. I didn't even I hadn't even been notified. She said in a phone call on Friday, all I'm doing is requesting that people pray for us. The Atlanta Police Department said officers were called to an apartment on East Paces Fer uh, Ferry Road Northeast on Thursday morning regarding a person injured. By the time police arrived, first responders were perform performing CPR on an unresponsive man later identified as Samuels. A woman in the apartment told officers that Simmons had complained about chest pains and that she attempted to help him, but he fell. The police uh, report states the woman called 911. Simmons was taken to Piedmont Hospital, police said. When contacted uh, Friday, the Fulton County Medical Examiner officer said they cannot confirm or deny any information. Okay. So the woman that uh, called the cops, uh, she was a nurse, they say. I don't know. Wasn't he talking shit about nurses? Well, no. He see. <laughs> they, here's the thing. He said, "Oh, was it nurses? Um, certain, uh, certain, certain career in fields the medical field. You don't marry. You okay. have fun with. He always said that. Okay, you have fun with them. As in, you don't marry them. You just fool around with them. Okay. So he was consistent with that. <laughs> it's it's crazy. The first thing people said when they saw the woman, oh, she. Is not uh, a size, what was a size? Five. Two, whatever, five, four. She was, she's probably eight or seven or eight, nine. Yeah, so people like, yeah, he said you have fun with women like that. So, I, look, it's. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not even going to talk about it. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, I hope in that last a seconds of your life, uh, he repented for anything that, you know, he hadn't repented for. And, um, yeah. I'm not going to say anything. I was going to say something, but I'm not going to say anything. You don't talk about the dead. Uh, 
if you don't say it while they're here, don't say it at all. So. Exactly. I remember when growing up, there would always always be someone who passed away and people didn't like them. They would say certain uncle. things. Uncle, <laughs> they would shit anyway. They yeah. would ride into the damn core. And you have somebody say that's not that's wrong. Don't say that. It's it, that's you. There's nothing to be anyway, done. Anyway, I wasn't gonna, you know, but just leave it alone. Yeah, there's nothing can be done now. Just move nothing on. can be done. But as expected, the internet is vicious. Although I'll say I probably have seen more people say just R.I.P. and complain about people that are quote unquote laughing at his death more than I've seen people actually laughing at his death. Um, most people are saying stuff like. I'm not happy about it, but I'm not sad either. One, I would imagine if you don't know somebody, you're going to be indifferent anyway. Yeah. It's like, that's why you don't really say, I'm sad. You go, it's unfortunate for the family. Praise I don't talks know about to the family. Like, I, I, can empath- I can, you know, empathize with it. Like, oh, I mean, you lost a family member, but. Because, you, you know, you've been through that and you know how it feels to. Lose someone, but. Lose someone, but. As far as you feel I'm not going to break down and. Unless, now there were some people I saw, some women in particular, who was giving uh, praise to him saying, he changed my life. He made me do this. When I went on his show, it made me get into this, this, and this. Now I'm better. My relationship is better. So that was women who was giving him praise. And as his well as videos the women. will be on YouTube, and um, I'm sure it'll gain more attention and traction. Who? Kevin Samuels. No, it won't. You'll have some people who didn't know who he was or no. there we go. See. Normally, when I, I, normally when people pass away on YouTube within like a month, they get this skew drop to zero like you'll mm-hmm. have people that go and rewatch some stuff but after that you know people kind of yeah. move on so yeah um well his work will remain on youtube so yeah whether you like it or not yeah uh <laughs> i wonder if people gonna try to get it taken off youtube i don't think so i wouldn't be surprised if they you know get rid of it but i don't know anyway you talking about people who got synthetic hair <laughs> Um, had to get one in. <laughs> had to get one in. Let's uh, move on, man. Uh, yeah. Unfortunate for them. Condolences to his family. And uh, hopefully he got right, like you said. Yeah. All right. Next up. I'm only talking about this for one reason. Dave Chappelle attacked on stage in Los Angeles. Dave Chappelle was not injured after a person tackled him on stage during a Comedian's performance at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles Tuesday evening. First thing I saw, I thought of when I saw this is, oh, they they stretching this Will Smith, Chris Rock thing out even more. Now they they adding Chris Rock to it now. You remember years ago, a comedian got in a fight on stage in I think it was South Carolina. I forgot his name. It's a comedian. He's actually pretty popular. It's a black dude. Who was on stage, and a, a person in the crowd started talking junk to him, and they, he ended up getting into a, a squabble. You know, fighting a physical altercation. Yeah, he, was, he had a fight because the dude was, you know, and he he won. And there was people talking about that, like the comedian had to put hands on the <laughs> had to lay hands on somebody that came on stage. So when Will Smith went up there and they made it a big deal, and now this per, this is not new, especially low level comedians. They have people walk up on them. All, remember the one we saw with a. <laughs> He walked up on a comedian, a comedian hit him with a guitar. Yeah. Like this is I not, guess it's a little different when you have a high profile comedian that is supposed to be protected. Yeah, and somebody just walks up on the stage, you kinda like, well, how does that happen? And that's what we're gonna get to. How does that happen? You was see they him? were they in a um facility or were they outside? They, were, they was uh they were in a building, I think. Okay. It might have been outside though, because when you look at the picture that they, they said it was outside. It looked like they was outside. Yeah, maybe so. Dave Chappelle was not uh, injured. Well, we saw that security officer responded after Chappelle, 48, was attacked, according to NBC News. The suspect reportedly sustained superficial uh, wounds on the arm and faces of the guards intervention and was taken to an area uh, hospital. The Los Angeles Police Department told NBC that the man was carrying a replica gun that was able to eject a blade when discharged. Though it is unclear if the man tried to use the weapon on Chappelle, comedian Chris Rock had taken to the stage prior to Chappelle according to ABC7, and later came on stage following the incident to joke was that Will Smith in reference to the incident at the Oscars. And we know, we know, we know. Uh, Chappelle appeared and momentarily lost composure because of the attack, but later joked about the attacker saying that was a trans man. <laughs> it wasn't a trans man. It wasn't. The gender identity of the suspect is known uh, as as of his report. Okay. 
when I first saw this, I did think, <laughs> is it possible they staged some situation where they sent some trans person up there to act like they were so he irate? He wasn't a tranny. He wasn't. I know. But I was saying when I, when this story oh. first came out, he said that, and people ran with it. As he said it's a joke, but they ran with it. Now, is it possible they staged this junk to bring some more attention? I, I was thinking, is it possible they sent some person up there on stage to bring some more attention to Dave Chappelle for the this? Uh, apparently, it's just so many people so angry with him, but I don't really, I don't really see it. Most well, people. I was thinking that I thought maybe they uh, this was a uh, them kind of make his image look a little bit more better. Who? I saw the trans man thing. I was like, oh, a tranny. Uh, I mean, Attack. a trans man attacked him. This has gone too damn far. And then it's like, no, it's not a, it's not a trans man. It's uh, just a, a weirdo <laughs> that ran up on stage and you know, but even that got his was, ass whipped. But even that wasn't quite what they said it was. So hold on, let me, let me show it. As you can see here, it didn't end well at all for him. He got straight. When I first saw it, damn, they really back there doing him dirty. <laughs> well, um, okay, he ran up on stage, uh huh, and uh, he was trying to attack Dave, right? Mm hmm. He tackled him. It he didn't tackled work. him. That's fine. His security guards also jumped in, and right? Yeah. He said John Stewart got so, involved. I think he. That might have been a joke. But I don't okay. know. Okay, if anybody else outside of Dave. And his security team, they got involved. He can sue. No, he can't. Yes, he can. Because he wasn't attacking them. He was attacking Dave. But they said he was helping Dave. No, you can't. No. Dave didn't need no help. He had security guards up there. He just (laughs) wanted to get one off on this man. That's what it was. Look, man, you up on stage, you can get done dirty by a lot of people. It ain't always going to be just the security. Well, it's supposed to be Dave and his security team. That ain't how real world work. You jump on stage with somebody. It might be a friend, a cousin. Hell, a girlfriend, a wife, they might swing off on you. Like, <laughs> it get dirty when you walk up on somebody like that. But look at it. Dave Chappelle assault uh, suspect's brother. He's not the type to just lash out for no reason. Suspect has connection to the transgender community, but showed no uh, animosity toward the controversial comedian his brother tells. So he does have connections to the transgender community? It's, it's crazy. So is this real or are they going off his jokes? He's not a transgender. No, and now it came out. I saw this on Comedy Hype. I don't know how true it is. They said that the, he said the reason why he went on stage is to bring attention to his grandmother. Who's getting kicked out he, of a house. For, uh, due to gentrification. So I don't get Did he tackle Dave? He has connections to the transgender community. I don't know what that is. He has connections to the transgender community. He tackles Dave Chappelle, but it was for gentrification, not this. It, it's just all convoluted. It's just. <laughs> Once again, it's just another story to distract you because yeah. we got another story, obviously, that became big news <laughs> recently. Uh, it's going to change a lot of things if it is what they said it is. All right, let me show this. Um, this is uh, the ending video of him. Pretty good. When I saw it, I thought he broke his arm. But the cops got his arm in the cuffs backwards you think that somebody would say you need to change that yeah because it's like because he, he i mean they beat this <laughs> they beat the hell out of him as you can see like like look they got his arm i don't know what's going on with that <laughs> got his arm twisted in there like you know it looked kind of crazy is that somebody foot print on his face <laughs> damn <laughs> damn he got you shouldn't have ran up on the stage. He got I hit. mean, I know grandma getting just the grandma going through some things, but damn, you had to do all that you to get attention. A, you took a you took a hell of a lot of whooping. You must love no your reason. grandma. It's good, God. It, <laughs> I good. love mine too, but damn, I don't think I would have. I ain't gonna do what you did. I think I'm gonna come up with a plan B. Yeah, that plan B was plan out A better. did work. A, a got your ass <laughs> whooped. Damn. <laughs> But look at this. Now, here's another thing. Did you even pinch Dave? <laughs> he tackled him. He, he pinched him. He okay. tackled him. He just didn't go to the ground. He fell. 
Now look at this. They, Beyonce said Jay Z and Elon Musk were in the front row during the Dave Chappelle attack. Which is in Warlocks. But that would mean I'm sure Elon Musk who just bought Twitter. Jay Z and Beyonce and all these other people. Diddy. I'm, I'm yeah, sure they had too. security. Yeah, they try to make it seem like Beyonce was in such danger. They might have could have look, hit her. So. How did he get up there? So I guess he came around because Dave apparently on stage didn't see him coming towards him. That's outside. Yeah, it's outside. That's project. Yeah, it's probably is that his house? I think he has shows at his house, don't he? Or at a barn. Well, or something. they have a lot of things going on at their houses. I mean, he joked and said he has orgies there, and then people was laughing, and I don't think he was. He was, joking. Tell, he was telling the truth. <laughs> I don't think he was joking. He did. He live in Ohio, out there in the. I think it's Ohio. Country. Like rural, lived, area, rural yeah. area, nobody's out there. Yeah, Azalea Banks told you. <laughs> <laughs> Azalea Banks, uh, she's like a she's like a broken clock. Cause she said a lot of crazy shit, but when she say something right, she get it right. Yeah, she do. <laughs> she, she knows how to use her words. She would be a fantastic author of a book. She'd she be would. fantastic. But yeah, if she, some people are, you could tell they brilliant. They just but their minds are just so uh, all over the place. It's so damaged. Yeah, that it's just it's irreparable. Yeah. So every so once they in a say while, some good shit, it's like wow. This is why can't you be this person all the time? And then they just say something <laughs> fucked up. You just like uh, yeah. you gotta let it go. Now this is the re- the replica gun. The knife is real. Now he had this on him. Oh, he was gonna shank him. Yeah. So uh, now right here it tells you that he did not get charged with uh uh. A felony. Los Angeles DA won't charge Dave Chappelle attacker with assault with a deadly weapon. They only got him with four misdemeanors. I mean, he did just tackle him, but he did have a weapon on him. <laughs> it looked like why okay, why is he carrying around a fake gun with a knife on it? This is just a strange story. This, it doesn't seem real. It's not real. It's why? Him, he was he was we know why he was up there. He I think yeah. I don't think the story real. Okay. I, it don't make sense for him to be carrying around a fake gun with a knife. How in the hell he it. get past that front row where it's a whole bunch of the security, high uh, profile? Uh, I'm sure that's security at the edge of the stages. Mind you, never mind the celebrities. There's a damn billionaire up there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. A billionaire is sitting there. Like <laughs> how the f- two, three? I don't know. Did is Diddy a billionaire? I don't know. But yeah, billionaire that don't you know. Pay employees, pay people. yeah, that, or artists. Oh, that's normal. Billionaires don't pay people. <laughs> we the, we know this. Billionaires don't pay people. That's oh, how they like the Black News Channel. <laughs> yeah, billionaires. That's normal. Billionaires <laughs> dip out on you, boy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think that story is kind of weird. Like I said, the fact they immediately brought when well, Chris Rock was there, and he immediately brought Will Smith up. The attack, Set up. he attacked us to the trans thing, but he said he did it for gentrification. He had a weapon on him, but they only got him for. Four misdemeanors, not assault with a deadly weapon. This story is just a waste of our intelligence. It really is. <laughs> we'll see if anything comes of it. Uh, speaking of uh, that community, guess who got the car? Got the charges dropped. Don Lemon assault case dropped by accuser after deep dive into memory. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't remember that. Oh, like his hands deep dived into his <laughs> pants and had <laughs> that man sticking his damn genitals. The man who accused CNN's Don Lemon of assaulting him in a Sag Harbor bar three years ago has dropped his lawsuit after a lot of inner reflection and deep dive into my memory. <laughs> <laughs> I have come to the realization that my recollection, recollection of the event, events that occurred on the night in question when I found uh, first met CNN anchor Don Lemon were not what I thought they were when I filed the lawsuit. Plaintiff Dustin Hint said in a statement. Hence, filed in 2019, claimed that uh, Lemon, 56, displayed a pattern of aggression and hostility. He alleged in the suit that Lemon put his hands down. His, we know what he did. Hence That's also, not hostility, is it? <laughs> he went to the Melly Kelly show late last uh, last year, commenting that uh, he, the accused behavior would be part of a pattern. We know what really happened. Somebody uh, got them charges. The bag got dropped off or... The threat was uh, put forward. <laughs> Don threatening him. Whichever one. Do you think he's the type to pay or threaten? Don <laughs> Lemon's like, you're going to end up in Jamaica. <laughs> you're going to end up in Jamaica. And you're going to end up in the ocean, flying with the fishes. Next to uh, Jeffrey Epstein's island. <laughs> That's where you want to go. 
You think he's the type to threaten, not pay? Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, he's the type to threaten, not pay. He, so behind the scenes, he's just like this cutthroat. Yeah. <laughs> you think he just cutthroat? Don said, don't let the fruitiness fool you. I mean, he, I don't know. Don might meet him. Don like busts his ass up. You never. Well, hold up. Let me Yo, call. whoa, 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 whoa! Calm it down, there, sailor. You went. <laughs> Calm it down, there. <laughs> Don might put hands on him. Oh, we could do that one too. Flag the play. <laughs> now I saw this video right here. Walt Disney, from uh, you know it's a shame. Do you? Yeah. I, uh, Michael uh, Scranton is on this show with uh this is the uh, Regis and not Regis Kelly and Michael. Yeah, I could tell when this black man saw this little boy in his dress, he automatically, if he got a son, was thinking about what if my son was dressed up like this, mm -hmm. and these That's people in the pain. audience are clapping like yeah. it's. This is not okay. They should be boo and they should be like, get they this boy out of a dress. Not, he just shouldn't be there. But this is the same kid that he was dragging around uh, strip clubs. Years ago, I remember this story. I can't remember the name. If y'all remember, there's a story from the 90s. What was the name of that club in the 90s that really popular? Disco or what's it called? I can't remember. Studio. Studio something. There was a club that was really popular in the 90s, I believe it was. And it was ran by a, no, it was a gay club, I think. Yeah. There was a popular gay club. It was in New York, right? Yeah, it was in New York. There was a popular gay club, and the dude that um, ran it ended up going to prison because he ch he killed someone and chopped their body up. Yep. But then he, he got out, didn't he? He got out because they said he had, um, he they said he did it under the influence of drugs. He was high on drugs. So he gets out of prison. We saw that documentary. And he starts a YouTube channel. Yeah, we saw it on YouTube. Saw it. That's how you showed it He started YouTube. a YouTube channel with his, I guess that's his friend, from the dude he helped cut somebody up with they on youtube now making videos talking about all the stuff they did back then laughing and joking about it who by the way he's a known pedophile but that's whatever he had this little boy on the show so the parents allowed this little boy to go on a show on youtube with these men well that's because that little boy is uh he's programmed yeah parents are probably in the know so they take they take this little boy around the country to strip bars and the people would throw money at him. And it's like, yeah, this is. <laughs> what if that was an actual little girl that was going around to script clubs doing that? No, it's a little boy going to gay clubs. I know. It, it's just, it's crazy, man. Watch this. Look at this shit, man. Like, how? Oh, look at that right there. Look at the heart. Hello, hello, hello Desmond. How are you? How you doing? Thanks for being here. <laughs> I love that you love root beer caffeine free. She loves that he loves root beer caffeine free. But was that one of his diva demands before he came on the show that he got to have root beer, caffeine free? This is like this is <laughs> this is insanity. I and mean, I don't really give. I, think, I, think I only think about the little black little boys that you know. The point of the matter is, this is going. They got this coming after them. It's for them. That's the point. So now, <laughs> remember we talked about uh, when we talked about Dwayne Wade, son Zion. When we talked about him, and I tried to make the argument to you that if Zion was actually a little girl, that it would not be as praised him getting on the internet kissing another little boy or little girl. It would not have been treated the same. So this brought your memory back to this? Yeah, I was making the point that for some reason, the sexuality of kids that they, they push as being gay or trans, the kids that they say are this, the, sexual, the, the, the morale for them is different. They're allowed to do stuff at a younger age that they would not allow a regular kid to do. If this was an actual little girl, they would not allow this. They would not allow them to walk around in hills and prance around. and like, They wouldn't allow it. Or if it did happen, the, the response would be different. Let me say that. The response yeah, would be different. The response would be different. So Get his ass off the screen. 
I'm tired of looking at him. <laughs> All right. All right, next up, let me go ahead and. Woo. Woo. -woo. Oh, Lord. Now, this one right here. Mm, 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 mm. This got, is the biggest news in the last. It's got him shaking like a hoe in church. <laughs> <laughs> what? They are. They don't know what fear. they're going to do. The amount of. I mean, instantly, you saw people trying to rally and do marches. <laughs> they was on. They was on the streets. Quick, I can't hoe. That's a. Uh, it's a fight. And for you niggas out there too, that means you gotta watch what you're doing too. Mm -hmm. You can't just pay that. Uh, that you can't just pay that bill off. That's seven fifty. So it's gonna be a lot of crime going up with. <laughs> oh Lord, what they call it? I forgot what they call that. Um, infanticide. Whatever they call it. Oh what man. Supreme, this is what needs to happen. Hold on. Supreme Court has voted to overturn abortion rights. Draft opinion shows. Now, this is just a draft opinion. Obviously, John Roberts, he confirmed it when he called for an investigation. But he also made the point to say, listen, this is just part of it. This is not the full scale of it. But based on the details we find in the damn opinion, <laughs> it's pretty much like they're going to do this. Obviously, it was leaked. The question goes, who leaked it and why? They leaked it because they wanted to um they wanted uh people to get uh outraged and and maybe they wanted to, you know, stop them from banning it. But it definitely is for the midterm elections. Yeah, I think there probably was a little bit there's two reasons. Put pressure on them to put it make it public so now before they have the actual decision made in the court the actual day to give the decision, they gonna have all these protests in the streets. Threats to their life. Is this going to be the uh, the March of the summer? No, I don't think that. Even though we we literally said this last year. The dangling the, the carrot. We said the second uh, Texas did that and the Supreme Court took on the case, we said, oh, the, the, the Democrats are going to use this in yep. 2022 for their midterm. This is going to be their phone. And they didn't say nothing. This is what after they're Texas, doing. After Texas did what they did and uh, the Supreme Court took the case, the Democrats stayed quiet because they knew this is this is our it's our bullet for next year. I don't know if it's going to work out for him, though. We hold that Roe and, and Casey must be overruled. Uh, Justice Alito writes in an uh, initial majority draft circulated inside the court. Now, who do you think one of the judges leaked it or some type of intern or something? Has Katanja Brown started yet? <laughs> no. She, I don't, she's still not a justice. Um, she's still not on, on there. Well, we know... Um... Thomas didn't leak it. No, he got they on his ass now already. So maybe did maybe he did. They on his ass right now. I put it out. I put it out. Just, just please leave my family alone. <laughs> Cause they on his they on his ass. So the Supreme Court has voted to strike down the landmark landmark rover. Now we just talked about this too when you had Fauci saying that courts <laughs> should not have any control over the medical field. Yeah. Over decisions on health. So what is Fauci going to say? So if the, if the court say, we're going to strike this down because we don't want nothing to do with the health thing, we're going to let the states decide for themselves. Ain't that the same thing as what Fauci was saying should happen with yeah. um with COVID? No, with the mask? Well, the southern states, y'all going to be shit out of luck. Yeah, all y'all getting struck down. <laughs> now, yeah, Washington states and Colorado, Oregon. Colorado, and California, California, New, New York. York. Y'all be safe. But the belt states, you're done. Fuck out of here. You got to travel up north. You're going to have to go follow up that north star. Baby. Follow the drinking gore. <laughs> follow the baby uh, oh, my grinder. <laughs> follow that. <laughs> it, you know, it's it's really sad. You know, it's like if you don't want to have kids, are you not ready for no kid? Protection, man. Abstinence? Protection. That's just it's not really that hard. Most of you ain't going to do abstinence, man. Abstinence? <laughs> Or protection. You learn about abstinence in what high school, middle school. You don't learn about once once you get out of high school, you don't hear that shit ever again. Cause it ain't, it ain't, it's like it's not that hard. People just you know. <laughs> so a baby the, is a it's a gift. Some people say it's a fetus to them. The draft opinion of full throated un, uh, unflinching uh, reputation of the 1973 decision was granted federal constitutional protections of abortion rights. In the subsequent 1992 decision, Planned Parenthood versus Casey, that largely maintained the right, Roe is egregiously wrong from the start. Alito writes, like I said, 
How far does go? Bands off our bodies. How far does it go? Do they actually? Do they? Also, another side we forgetting. There's a segment of America that need workers. They need workers. That's why they allowing all these immigrants in because their population is dropping. They need workers. They like, damn, y'all aborting all these damn kids, and we got this generation coming up, and we ain't gonna handle damn body. So, are they getting rid of this to bring the numbers? Look, <laughs> if you get pregnant, you gotta have it because we need workers. 20 years from now. We need workers for the next generation. Wow. Yeah, they need, yeah, that's what they're doing. They need uh, workers. They need bodies. And then white people, we keep, we keep saying this over and over, um, their population is on a decline. When we say white people, but we see who they're really directing this towards. Oh, black women. Biden blasts radical road draft, warns other rights at risk. Now, what do he Our mean? civil rights? Are we going back into the, slavery? Not, it's funny, the day that this happened, how many people went to the internet and said, wow, how long before I'm going to be back in the uh, fields picking cotton? It's like, are you serious? Well, you know what? Are you, hold you, on. Are you comparing <laughs> not being able to kill your child to slavery? Maybe, maybe we need to go back because you know what? In a, in a slave, and we use a slave, you had babies. We well, had family unit then. Hold on. I think, I think it's a little bit overly romanticized, by the way. But... I, it's not overly romanticized. Uh, when I when I when I when I hear that we had no choice. When I hear that, I hear that motherhood is slavery. Motherhood is not slavery. That's saying, not what I'm trying you, to reference it to. No, not you. When they say, if you take this away, how long before you take away my ability to be quote unquote free? Somebody can't give you your freedom. By the way, it doesn't exist. But it seems like they're comparing motherhood or parenthood. Because there's some dudes <laughs> that's fighting hard for it, too. Fighting they're hard for what? For the right for women to kill, to have abortions. It seems like they're comparing parenthood to slavery. Or some type of subjugation against them. Some, it's oppressive. It's not oppressive. Uh, you listen to some of these people, man. He gave y'all a gift to be able to bear something, bring something into this world. And that's the, that's the greatest accomplishment that y'all could do. It's more complicated to some people. That's the greatest accomplishment that a woman can do is to bring a child into That's an insult world. now. That's not an insult. They that should be, ha ha, I got one over you. Y'all <laughs> can't an, do that. That's an insult. <laughs> but y'all, they see it as, oh, that's that's the only thing we, no. But that's the greatest thing that you can do. Um, anyway, Senate to vote next week on commodifying Roe v. Wade into law, but obstacles still remain. So the now the Democrats are trying to act like, oh, we're going to try to commodify it and make it where it doesn't matter what the courts say. It'll be, it'd be law across the country where this is allowed. It's like, why are you waiting until now? You knew this uh, four months ago, five months ago, six months ago. Why are you waiting until now? <laughs> but obstacles remain. Exactly. So that oh, means it still... ain't that easy as they saying it is. No, this is another way to cop out. They're not going to do shit. Democrats will force a procedural vote Wednesday on the abortion rights bill after the draft opinion shows Roe is likely to be overturned, but the bill is expected to face another filibuster. Couldn't they just get rid of the filibuster, if I'm not mistaken? They can just literally just get rid of it. Now, that's if you're a proponent of them doing it and protecting uh, this Roe versus Wade. If you're a person who wants to protect that, if, if you just look at it, the Democrats are doing everything they can to not get nothing done either. They just standing around really. Exactly. This is waiting for it to happen so they can say, hey, look who took your rights away. Vote for us and we'll give them back. <laughs> you took them away too. Vote for us and we'll give them back. Now I gotta talk about this. This one pissed me off. Out of all the, the tweets and the posts on the YouTube and all this other stuff, this one was the most blatant, what they were saying. I keep, they kept, every time they talked about, I put the video out, every time they talked about abortion, they always referenced, they would say black and brown, but they would always focus on black women. They kept saying that black women need access to this, that having children is more likely to put them into poverty and all this other stuff. You know which what? Which is a sick way that, to that, think about. That is absolutely, you know what? My great-grandmother had nine kids. Yeah. You know what they did back in the day? They ate beans, bread, rice. Niggas made it through. You do what you got to do. It stick to you. It make you feel. I'm not going to say That's that. That's some bullshit. I'm not going to say that uh, 
should that be normalized? What should be normalized? Living off beans, rice, and stuff like that. You know Struggling. what? Struggling. Should you, that be normalized? Is that, it's not. Oh, no, it me, shouldn't be normalized. Let me, just, let me play the, the, evil, you go. the evil devil's advocate. Here you go. Is it possible we have romanticized struggling? I don't. I don't think we've romanticized struggling. What What I'm viewing it is, we made it through, and if our ancestors did it, why can't we do it? Well, should you always want to do something better in the future? You, you should always want to do, do something more. better in the future. If you are not prepared to have kids, then practice abstinence or use protection. It's pretty simple. I just don't think it's fair for you to take away a life that could that could potentially bring something to this world that like we talk about that we've said this before. They keep talking about uh what if we've supposed to have all these leaders and they all dead. They they well, never even made it into the world. Well, no. We can't just blame that on the ones in the womb. We kill leaders out here on the streets too. That, yeah, that's true. There's some little boy that was walking to school, got hit by a straight bullet because some thug gangster exactly. was playing in the street. So that's a form of abortion as well. Yeah. So let's make, I'm just pointing it out. It ain't just the womb. It's also the streets as well. But the, we know the womb is the most dangerous place. According to numbers? Yeah. According to numbers, it's the most dangerous place. So when when they be talking about, you know, it's, it's sad that they say having a, being uh, taking, uh, taking away your right to have an abortion is just so bad and harmful for the black community. It's just like, they should look at that and go, how is that harmful for us to grow, to take, not to to grow, grow. as numbers? Because damn, we've been 11, 12, 13, 14% of the population for how many decades? Since like the 60s. Even though that. we know that shit is a lie. Probably. It's sad when you're the smallest group and you make up the biggest percentage of abortions. Yeah. It's, it's in your neighborhood. They're targeting but you. You, also you make can't the, see that. You also made the biggest percentage of people in prison. Exactly. Make the biggest percentage of people in poverty. It's just like everything so negative clearly, is on you. Clearly, doing it this way ain't working. So how about just popping them out? And go or the other way? if you're not ready, practice abstinence and protection. <sighs> yeah. Now let me go ahead. Y'all probably don't read this already. I do wonder how these white supremacist lawmakers would feel if their little white daughters were raped and impregnated by a black men. Hold on. Look at what she used. Little. little. So precious. Like that, like that infamous commercial with a black dude and a little short little white, white woman, and we thought she and looked like a child. child, and it just outraged those white men yeah. on YouTube. That's the game plan that she was trying to play. So innocent little white daughters, your little precious daughters, little. How come black people are just seen so much bigger and mature, but these other races are just small and dainty little people? <laughs> you well, know, you we we fourteen, but we look damn twenty four. Yeah, but we know y'all asses be fucking. Uh, 25 looking 50. So. <laughs> Age like spoiled milk. And then, but she uses the racist trope of the rapist black man. Exactly. So That's she the target. She, That's she used the target. That, she used that racist trope to defend abortion for white women. I can't stand them. <laughs> I can't, I can't stand them. This is, now she deleted it instantly. This is, this is, this is their whole lineage, their whole. This is what they've been doing every fucking since we've been around their asses, romanticizing us, fantasizing about us, uh, having uh, intercourse with them. That's the white woman's whole ideology, getting with a damn nigga. I don't, it's sick. I don't know how you got to that from no, this. No, I'm, I'm going to say it is sick. How many times do you hear these stories of white women falsely accusing black men of raping them? You have to seriously say, what is wrong with y'all? How many stories have we seen where it was another race of man, their own race of man that attacked them and raped them. And they accuse a black man. It's just weird. That's romanticizing us. No, because you don't stigmatize your own. And they've already built this thing up that the criminal in this country is the, is the black people. So not even just with what you were talking about. Also, hell, people rob banks and put on fake black masks. They commit all type of crimes. And the person, remember the woman? Who was driving and said somebody stole her truck and robbed her? She said it was black people. They they have made you the criminals. Yeah, they they <laughs> Why just, when they bring up this fifty percent fifty percent of all crime is done by black people, it's like, no. <laughs> black people kill each other. And that's why they had the highest homicide or murder rate. Every other crime they're nowhere, they're not fifty percent. It's just one stat because they're killing each other in their own neighborhoods. But they use that to say you're the criminal. You're the criminal for killing yourself. <laughs> that's, 
That's the other part of it. It's just, yeah, she knew what she was doing. She she used this as a way to... It was a dog whistle. Yeah. And these are the liberals. Not a damn conservative. The conservatives are real subtle with what they say. They say it real slick. They say things, they use more dog, I use more dog whistling than this. This is just. Right out blatant. This is like, bam. If you don't, if you don't keep Roby versus Way, These black men. These black men are going to be raping gonna be all these white women, getting them pregnant. You're going to have a whole bunch of. You're going to have all these donkeys. These black uh, these kids. These kids, these Quote, donkeys. unquote. <laughs> running around here, you better keep this into effect. And I guess you thought the white men were going to be shaking in their boots. No, I mean, any man would just. <laughs> You come exactly. over you want to. <laughs> but hell, the white man then said, I'll just go get uh Lin Lee. Oh, Lily, Lilene, <laughs> Ling Ling. Sue Sue. What what's oh yeah, did we ever talk about the woman who was accused of messing around with the lawmaker? Uh what's her name? Fang Fang. Yeah, we talked about Fang Fang. Fang Fang was twice. Like, she was a spy that yeah. was sleeping around with an American politician. Then she got caught up. She died in a plane crash. <laughs> In China, her name was, oh, Fang Fang is dead. The article just written says she's dead. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly she's dead. She's in Israel. <laughs> so even Chinese going to Israel? <laughs> they go to Israel too. I don't think so. They She in China more than likely. Now, see, actors dragged for Roe vs. Wade tweet about white supremacist lawmakers. The internet has dragged our um, actress Amanda Duarte for comments she made about white supremacist lawmakers following the news the Supreme Court may be ready to overturn Roe vs. Wade. She's an actress? Yes. The news arrived in the form of unprecedented 19... Okay, we already had a thousand social media tweets to express their outrage in a draft, including Duarte, who in a sensitive tweet said this right here. It's not clear how many engagements the tweet received before it, along with Duarte's entire account, was deleted. However, hundreds of online have shared screenshots of the tweet calling it racist and, and look vile. at her. Look at her. She's Spanish, too. Duarte? That's some type of look Spanish. Look at her. Maybe, uh, maybe Spain, huh? Look at her. Yeah. Not attractive at all. She wanna said it. That's the crazy part. She didn't. She didn't say when your daughters are attacked or abused. She said when black men do it. I wouldn't piss on you. The woman, Travis, please, please what? You don't have to tell people you don't want this woman. We get it. <laughs> damn, you. Well, just, do get damn. I guess you must want it in. No, I don't. I just don't need to. Did that, that turn you on? Did it get you riled up for what she said? <laughs> Nigga, I get it. No, I'm gonna express how I feel. <laughs> now you can sit there and be all, uh, not express how you feel. I'm I'm going to express how I feel. <laughs> I'm gonna get it off of my chest. I'm gonna sleep like a baby tonight. I am too. So I don't think you. Yeah, thinking about her. <laughs> Amazing how a liberal white woman can point fingers at a white supremacist while practicing white supremacy. Frederick Joseph, this is nasty. According to Amanda Duarte, abortion should be available to white women in case of rape. <laughs> in case of rape. By a black man, white liberal racism. Yeah. Oh, they just do a photo shoot. You remember mean? the wedding photo shoot? Oh. Yeah. Did a nice little photo shoot. Did she the, did she the frat dude? The black dude, frat dude, Mm-mm. who allowed a, uh, I guess it's his wife, to put a, a chain around his neck. He came out on all fours at his wedding. It's, it's niggas out here doing some crazy, niggas is nasty out here. That's why I had to. That's why I have to go in, like I have to, like I go in, because we got this shit going on. You gotta make sure you, there's a difference. And niggas gotta be correct. There's a, you gotta make sure to prove there's diff, there's differences. There's two sides. There's the freakos over there. Yeah, freakos. <laughs> you know who you are, freakos. <laughs> Black and Hispanic people have the most to lose if Roe is overturned. Here we go, tying in uh, Hispanics in. Yeah, I, I'm tired of this shit. Hold on. I know you're about to go in. Just hold on. If you are black or Hispanic in a conservative state that already limits access to abortions, you are far more likely to, far more likely than white person to have one. What? If you are a black Hispanic in a conservative state that already limits access to abortion, you are far more likely than a white person to have one. Is that worded wrong? No, she's saying it right, but is it that feels like it's worded wrong? No, they're saying if you a, have, if you're in a conservative state. Uh, you're more than like twice as likely to have an abortion than a white woman. She said it right, but I'm wondering is she are they making a point that's a good thing? Or is that a negative? I don't I don't know. And if the US Supreme Court allows states to further restrict or even ban abortions, minorities will bear the brunt of it, according to statistics analyzed by the Associated Press. Remember when we just talked about the cigarettes thing? Yeah. And they're gonna ban flavored cigars and uh menthol cigarettes. Mm-hmm. 
And they said, well, if you do this, it's going to affect black people the most. And I was saying, well, stopping black people from smoking is good, but it is also a weird thing. How's it affecting them not being able to get menthol cigarettes? No, they're saying they're not going to smoke. Black people smoke menthol the most. So if you get rid of that, more than likely a lot of them are going to quit smoking. That's a bad thing? No, it's a good thing. Okay. But I'm saying, why would you not just ban cigarettes? They're trying to get black people to go back to smoking crack? No, that's my point. So now you look at this, they're saying that black and Hispanics, according to them, are more likely to have abortions. So you sh- they're saying you should fight to make sure you can continue to have more abortions. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they're saying this the way they wanted to say it. What they're saying is <laughs> you're more likely to do this, so you better fight to make sure you protect this so you can continue to be more likely to do it. But they're not saying the same thing with the cigarettes. If black people are more likely to do this wouldn't you want to get rid of it to protect them you you want to protect them from cigarettes but they don't want to protect them from having abortions the potential impact of minorities became all the more clear on monday with the leak of a draft supreme court opinion suggesting the court's conservative majority is poised to overturn the landmark 1973 decision legalize abortion the draft decision is not yet final but it has sent shockwaves through the country overturning the roe v wade decision would give states authority to decide abortion's legality Roughly half, largely in the South and Midwest, are likely to quickly ban abortions. When it comes to affect the minorities, the numbers are um, unambiguous. In Mississippi, people of color compromise 44%, comprise of 44% of the population, but 81% of women receiving abortions, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, which tracks health statistics. It's, I'm reading this article. Are they saying this is a good thing? Dude, you know they're saying what they're saying. <laughs> If they're 44% of the population, but 81% of the abortion people receiving abortions, are you saying that's a good thing? Or are you just saying, look, the number's so high, they're going to be ones impacted by this? Well, you would think that instead of them wanting them to continue with the abortions, that they would fix the poverty. That's what I'm saying. They're not, they're, they're treating it because like. Because why don't people combat that and say, well, instead of us promoting uh, abortions, you're saying that, you know, black people are getting abortions because poverty, yeah. because of poverty, then why don't we give them reparations or there you go. do something for that community so that they will not be having as much as abortions? But no, we rather for them to keep dying and killing <laughs> themselves off and continue being poor. Yep. But you're still poor whether you have the baby or not. That's, that, that's what, if having the abortions is to stop you from being poor, but as a group, you're still you're poor. You're still poor. Then, so that's why I said, pull out a damn can of beans like you've been <laughs> doing in the lightning bread and continue eating what you've been eating. When it comes to, uh, in Texas, there are 59% of the population and 74% of those receiving abortions. The numbers in Alabama are 35% and 69%. Like, numbers are crazy. In Louisiana, minorities represent 42 Now, hold on. What does the word minorities mean right here? Is it black and brown still or is it now including? Well, in the article below, it says, uh, black, brown, and indigenous people, <laughs> like the Hebrew Israelites keep doing, you know, saying black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Throw the LGBTQ in there in uh, poor communities. Guess who they're talking to? The numbers in Alabama, I saw that minorities represent 42% of the population, according to the Health State Department, and about 72% of those receiving abortion. Abortion restrictions are racist. Huh? We know damn well that, I'm going to say it, and some of share it. I don't think abortions are impact, impacting indigenous people. Well, you think they're not having abortions? I think they may be having abortions, but their population is already so small. So how is it impacting them? If the population is small and they're killing it, they're having abortions, it's making it smaller. But the population is already small from the beginning. It, they're, they're literally like what? Two, three percent of the population. So if they have an abortion, is that population going down even more? But most of them live on reservations. They have a, they have abortion clinics on reservations. Apparently so. They they seem to got a name here. So how does that affect them if they have their own abortion, abortions on reservation? That's their own separate thing. They're sovereign uh, nations. They're not really included with that. So how does that affect them? If they have an abortion, then they probably no. I'm strengthen. saying, how does talking about abortions affect them when that's really not going to affect them because they have their own stuff on their reservations? Don't they? They still have to follow um, federal law, don't they? they just, I they thought have... they were sovereign citizens. They didn't have to follow federal law. And uh, matter of fact, Oklahoma State is really 
Indian territory. They gave over half the state to them. So they, I don't think they have to follow. They don't have to follow the. Uh, I think they still do. So if abortion, are you sure about that? So if abortion is a uh, Roe v. Sorry, if Roe v. Roe v. Wade is overturned, it would be up to the state. I, but they're not a state. Who's not a state? It's no longer. Well, how is it still uh, longer? Okay, I don't know. What, what is, okay, they're on a reservation. I'm not. I thought since they're on their reservation, they have their own separate thing. It's not included well, with Well, clearly it still impacts them if they're saying it. No, we, we know they're just throwing them in there. We're just going to pretend like they're not okay, just throwing these on. groups in there with, with us. You started with it don't affect them. Now you're saying, okay, they might have them, but it doesn't matter? To me? No, it don't matter. I'm not saying it matter to you. Are you saying they won't be impacted by it? Uh, this Roe v. Wade being struck down. No, I don't think they would be impacted by it. I mean, okay. I, <laughs> I don't know. I think they still go based off the law of the land. Okay. But we're not. We're thinking. We're not for sure. Well, you're thinking too. you just, <laughs> you acting like you got the fact that I'm just making sure I'm picking you up my ass. you you guessing too. You always got to be devil's advocate. I, I'm I don't not understand. devil's advocate. You started with it don't impact them. Like, well, I, I don't think it impact them. If they haven't, if they haven't abortions, they're, Got population is shrinking as well. <laughs> well, you ain't got no damn population from the beginning. I mean, I really don't know what to say. Look, man, just say you just don't give a damn about what they in. They know I don't give a damn. All right, That's so, why it's bothering me because I don't know why they so, always included into it. So don't try to make a false argument, saying because you're. How am I making a false argument? Because you said it won't impact them. It will. <laughs> just say you don't care. That's fine. Uh, said Kathleen Torres, an organizing manager for. Uh, whether it's a Texas organization that helps pay for abortion, they even pay for them for you. They directly impact people of color, black, brown, indigenous people, people who are trying to make ends meet. <laughs> Travis is fuming. He, the black and brown thing is tipping him over there. <laughs> it's no longer the black, brown thing. Oh, now he had an indigenous not Asian. An, you see that article where the Asian said, uh, they did a poll and said that Asian Americans feel the least American. Well, they're they not feel, American. Sorry, they feel the least at home in America. Because like, they're not at home. <laughs> you know, you feel like that when you're not at home. Well, are black people at home? Yeah, some of us are at home because we were here before everybody else was here. Yeah. <laughs> you done? <laughs> yeah. Damn, I'm not I'm Don't shoot them. I'm just talking. Please don't come swinging at me. <laughs> White people shouldn't feel at home. <laughs> Uh, Mexicans this, shouldn't feel at home. And this, uh, a Native Americans feel at home, shouldn't they? Native, who? Native Americans. The Mongoloids? Yeah, them too. Who you, who you talking about? You talking about black people or the Mongoloids? Which one? The Mongoloids too. Shouldn't they? No, they shouldn't feel at home because they came here after we did. <laughs> Not all black people. Let me make sure I point out. Not all black people are indigenous to America. There are some from all over the world we were, here, we were all over the place but yeah why is the great uh disparities um Bertman roberts executive director of the alabama based yellow hammer fund which provides financial support for abortions said women of color in states with restrictive abortion laws often are, have limited access to health care and lack the choices uh for effective birth control schools often have an ineffective or in a, in a, inadequate sex education so what now so what? they're not saying people of color have inaccurate sex education. Yeah. But that's at schools. The schools they are surrounded by usually don't have. That's that. a lie. What you mean? Well, I was in, I think every, what, it's in a seventh grade, eighth grade, you get sex education? They said it's, uh, it said, they said it's ineffective or inadequate. How is it ineffective? Or inadequate. How is it inadequate? They're saying it they're not working. giving them the proper information? Yeah, or, they're saying it's not, it's not effective. So white people get the proper information on, <laughs> now if you, you right. don't pull out, this is what's going to happen. You're going to create a kid. They, they is kind of saying that. that the so now they're playing with our intelligence. Now they're saying the schools that the white people got, they know how to, they don't have as many abortions because they have better sex education. Is that, is that what they're kind well, of saying? Well, what right more there? education do you need? Abstinence? Protection? Travis, abstinence ain't happening. <laughs> it ain't happening. What more, what more do <laughs> you, you need? No, we're going to. No, you, no <laughs> you keep talking about something. <laughs> it ain't happening. It does happen. It does happen, but it ain't gonna be no on a major scale. It ain't happening because it's not happening, and it hasn't been happening. Uh that's not true. They said this generation is is the most uh, has the least amount of years at at teenage years. Yeah, so they but, they're but staying absent we, no, longer. We're in the era of people in general are having less kids. But are they having less kids because they get because they're getting abortions? 
I don't know. Hey, there you go. But that's some bullshit telling us that they have, uh, we don't, there's, there's not good sex uh, education in the minority. They didn't just say minority. They just said that some of the schools don't have good, ineffective. Well, who are they talking about in the article? <laughs> they're talking about people of color, so black, that means, brown, and. <laughs> so that means they talk, they're not talking about white people. It's a shame we always have to compare stuff to them. I didn't. But you made a good point. Well, there's well, hold on. There's only black, Native American, indigenous, white, and Asian. The Indian, indigenous is in. Oh, you talking about hell? They they classify themselves as white or Asian, so <laughs> they don't really got no identity. Either they hey, white or Asian. Asian. They are Asian. Depending on what part of the Middle East you're talking about. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Faith leaders react to leaked Supreme Court draft opinion on Roe v. Wade. I, I ain't going to read the article. Just go to the highlighted names. The Reverend Jack, Jacqueline Lewis. Yeah, that's a black woman. Senior minister of Mineral, uh, Collegiate Church in New York City. Abortion assets can't be separated from laws. Attacking trans kids. Bodily <laughs> autonomy is all connected. One campaign to structure U.S. laws around evangelical faith. Liberation is collective. We now, only get free when we all fight for us. Now, what the f- what does that have I, to do with trans kids? I don't know. They found a way to bring it up. I don't know. You found. Uh, by the way, pay attention to all the rabbi, rabbi, all the rabbis in here. You the know that, yet. You know that um, the <laughs> idea of abortion is allowed in the Judaism, Judaism, or their their version of Judaism. By the way, the is Israel, Israeli, Jewish version of it. That's why America legalized it here. <laughs> So in the uh, Israeli, what was it called? The Talmud, Talmud, Talmudic, which is Jewish mysticism and going to all the other stuff. Yeah. Abortion is okay. Just going to point that out. So it's, it's not a surprise to see all these rabbi in support of this. But let me go down to another. Is there any more? Oh, uh, Reverend Tracy D. Blackman. Reverend Tracy D. Blackman, who has the U- uh, United Church of Crisis Justice and Local Church Ministries, shared a brief statement. In this moment, when abortion rights are under assault, please know this. The United Church of Christ faithfully supported access to safe abortions before Roe v. Wade, and we will faithfully support it now. This is not a draft for us. This is discipleship. So, how are you a reverend? You you should have read the Bible from front to back. To back. back to front. This is Molech. This is a form. <laughs> this is sacrificing children. That's just... That's worship of Molech. In the Baal. Justin, uh, I'm not going to say that last name, Jiboni, Jiboni, president of and campaign, a Christian civil organization, civic organization. Abortion is a human dignity issue, but that issue doesn't end at birth. Wait. I was confused. I didn't, How I was just like. Hit my, it hit me like, wait, what? I was like, is the brother for it or is he against it? Because I, because he says. Abortion is a human dignity issue, so that's almost like it's a it's a it's a moral thing. Yeah, you have a right to do it, but you know have a right not to. As but well. the issue doesn't end at birth. So, brother, what you did was real smooth because you got <laughs> niggas out here confused about what you're trying to maybe say. Maybe I'm slow brain. I admit, maybe I'm slow brain on this one. I ain't but if you. anybody is in this part of the video and you can understand what he's saying, <laughs> let us know. Is he yay? <laughs> Or nay. Or nay. I think he's yay, but that end, but that issue doesn't end at birth. Simply, it, how are is and obviously it's people in that article that are saying praise God, mm. and this is the white people, by the way. Yeah. You got to compare to them again. It's a shame yeah. that you have white people that are like yay, praise to God that we don't uh, that Roe versus Wade is going away. Our prayers have been answered. <laughs> Like Cat Williams. It's raining white women. My <laughs> prayers have been answered for some of you niggas. <laughs> it's sad that these are pastors, reverends, and they are for abortion. Yeah, it's crazy. But I'm going to show you a video that went, I saw on my timeline about Roe v. Wade being allowed off a of false pretense. It was a false story. The woman, Roe, Admit that she lied. The reason why it was passed because the woman Rose said that she was gang assaulted. It wasn't by 
I don't know. I, I, I thought it in my head. If I, I thought about going back and no, it would have been. It would have been known. Yeah, people would brought it up. It would have been a lot of. It would have been lynchings in the um. Was it when was this past? Seventy three. Seventy three. This, 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 this fight probably started in the sixties, late sixties. Which yeah. is funny because the civil rights movement was right there in the sixties, and then the end of the sixties it started the uh, the uh, 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 abortion mm -hmm. feminist stuff started in the seventies. By the time you got to the eighties, it was over. It was just. That's when you got all the other stuff. Just That's when the black woman in. started tying herself to the uh, that Caucasian woman. Yeah. And shit hit the fan. <laughs> Ain't been the same since. <laughs> Let me show y'all. Her admitting that she said she was gang assaulted. And the whole case was given the okay because of her saying that she was gang assaulted and she was impregnated. Mm -hmm. And she felt I had the right to not be forced to have these criminals, these disgusting men... I shouldn't be forced to have one of their children. And so that's how the case got off the ground. But then at the end of her life, she was repented for it. Saying, you know, she tried to, oh, not to go be uh, born again. to go get baptized and say, oh, I should have never did that. It's too late now. Think so about it, that for a so second. So was she gang raped or was it actually one person? She, it didn't happen. So this was a lie that she made up yes. to get an abortion. No, to, to have, make it legal. So was she actually pregnant? No, I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> Watch this. Jane Rose's story was a terrible one. She said she had been gang raped, gotten pregnant, was desperate to get an abortion. That's what everyone believed, as long as Jane Rowe remained anonymous. When she went public, she told a different story. You were raped while you were in Georgia? No, I wasn't. You were not? No, I wasn't. Oh, so all those stories that are in the books and so forth are not true? Yes, sir. Yes. They're not true. Right. And it turned out that lying wasn't the only embarrassment this darling of the pro-choice forces presented. In her personal treaties published last year, Norma McCorby told the story of her somewhat sordid life. Then she still adamantly supported abortion. Now she adds that to the list of sins she took with her into the baptismal pool. I've cheated people out of money. I've sold drugs. I... You know, I, I, used, I, was, I was an abusive alcoholic for, you know, many, many years. Um, I've done a lot against his teachings. Um, but I, I think the far greater sin that I did was to be the plaintiff in Roe vs. Wade. Let me go. Oh, yeah. You got this Negro walking her into this pool to baptize her when what she did has affected your community the, the most. most. That's why I can't stand these devils. All they do is lie. She should be locked up. Uh, She's caused millions of murders. Whether you say they did it. She didn't do it. They did it. She caused, has caused millions of murders because she lied and said that she was gang raped and she needed an abortion and the shit never happened. That is a public lynching, stoning Damn. millions and millions yeah, million. of kids black little babies but you have been killed you because of what she lied about you can't blame her for other people's decisions though i they can blame her for for starting it because it wouldn't it wouldn't have existed if she had, wouldn't told that lie they still made a decision because the fact that she was a career criminal <laughs> and was able to be have this type of impact why is roby versus ray even is still here if they know because this they is made true. a decision based off of other other things too she was a big part of it. she's one of the witnesses that they used the pro-choice people the women they went and found her i guess they gave her a fake story to push and you know just liars all they do is tell lies came in line <laughs> came in line still lying and gonna leave line <laughs> that's what they do oh uh, man by the way Remember this whole thing the last two years? The horse pills? Where people were talking about horse dewarmer. Yeah. People were talking about using uh, certain drugs to help with uh, COVID. Whether it works or not, it, it just was something that was automatically shunned from the beginning. Well, look at this. 
Mr. Pristol, I don't know how you say that, Miss, Miss Prist, Mr. Pristol, Miss O. Pristol, is relatively easy to acquire from a veterinary, <laughs> veterinary sources, since in addition to medical in, uh, medically inducing abortions, it's also used to treat ulcers in horses. So they, <laughs> they promote, so look what they, they, and they had to bring this up because people were bringing it up constantly in the comments. They talked about Joe Rogan and all those other people who was talking about ivermectin. And it was just, a, it's a horse dewormer. Don't use it. Don't listen to these people. But you'll use <laughs> medicine used on horses to treat ulcers. So you can use horse medicine, according to them, to get abortions. But you can't use but horse medicine. you can't medicine. use it for other things. Nope. <laughs> you'll find a way. Just like my body, my choice. <laughs> until... For abortion, but not body my choice for. I don't want to get the uh, vaccine. What? Well, it's going to spread you're, it to other people. Se- Here's the crazy part. You don't want to take it. You're selfish. But you don't want to have a baby. You're not selfish. You Self-love, self-care. No, that's selfish. It's called self-care. You're protecting your future. You're, you're making sure that you're completely uh, uh, ready for that situation. It's selfish to not bring somebody into the world to have free will. Well, they'll say to be able to live. Well, they'll say, what about their free will? I get to make you gave that up too. when you decided to lay down with somebody. <clears throat> oh, you, 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 that was it. That was a nail in the coffin for you. <laughs> I just after they were done nailing you, it's possible <laughs> that you may produce something if you didn't, you know, <laughs> do the, the proper thing you should have did <laughs> with use protection. Nelly, Nelly, you Yeah, <laughs> word play is off the chain, trying to tell you. <laughs> should be a rapper. <laughs> uh, let's go to the next thing, man. We done with this. <sighs> yeah, man. I, <laughs> when this whole Native American adding indigenous people, it started like three years ago. Now, I'm going to say, they've been doing this black and brown thing a little bit longer, but this... Now, now you adding them on too. Yeah. Shit's frustrating. Yeah, he's just gonna get in soon. <clears throat> and now we're going into another story where they talk about black people, but it's a biracial person that they're making the whole topic of the damn story. Yeah, but it, it's the right winger. So anybody who's not white is is, is the is, article is, is Black America. I'm saying, but this is a uh, New York Post, so this is right wing. So anybody who's not white. They can it's they, black. They get painted. Yes, you could be black. We'll let you. Get sad. You, can, you can stand in for blackness. Democrats hemorrhaging <laughs> black America support in U.S. cities. Blacks. <laughs> the way they just, I don't know. The way, the way when you when it's them and you know how they blacks. sound when they saying it. Blacks. Blacks. It's like they exaggerate the. Yeah, it's like <sighs> the venom. Yeah, in the back of their throat. Blacks might be at the cusp of a second great migration. This time in the voting booth. <laughs> they just reference slave. No, <laughs> right wing is boy. Subtle. Very. But yeah. Uh, now look at him. This is <laughs> this is proof. He's, uh, as you, you think you say, he's, uh, you think I he's think Hispanic. he's black and Hispanic. He from Brooklyn. But he's not, he's the, they used him, New York Post or whoever did his interview. He's black and brown, quote they, unquote. No, they used him as the face of black. Which is sad. Because <laughs> the boy looked like an Arab, to be honest with you. It said blacks. It said, black America is uh, waking up to the Democrats' failure. And the question now is whether or not it's too late, said conservative commentator Candace Owens. Oh, we don't care about that, she say. There are 30 million uh, voting age African Americans, and 92% of those who voted pulled the lever for Biden in 2020, but only 69% support him today. According That's to a, still too much. Yeah. According to a recent CNN survey, a new Quimpact poll put black support for the president at just 58%. With That's still too much. With twenty percent strongly disapproving of his leadership, David Shaman Ortiz, Ortiz. twenty nine is among the growing list of disillusioned former Democrats and the biracial Brooklyn, Brooklyn native, former city council staffer and political activist marched with Black Lives Matter in twenty twenty. This year, he protested outside the U.S. Capitol, waving "Fuck Biden, Let's Go Brandon," and Trump twenty twenty four flags. Sharing the image on social media. You think because your mom then uh, uh, then <laughs> anchored your ass in here that you you safe now? Yeah, that's why you talk your shit. Uh, crime continues to ravage the black community almost Amer- in almost all American cities, wildly out of proportion to population. 
African Americans were the victims of like 65 percent of all NYC murders in 2020. But hold on, what about the Asian hate? Shouldn't they have been the highest victims of uh, murders with all the crime and beating up with the Asians? That what about the anti-Asian hate? Black students, meanwhile, have underperformed their peers for decades in what school chancellor David Banks called an outrageous failure of public education. The burden of illegal immigration is also unfairly fostered onto African-American communities. Pundits say illegal captured at the border and then sickly flown into the New York area by the Biden administration are not placed in the custody of Cabo Hill uh, or the Upper East Side. They're dumped instead on poor, mostly minority community neighborhoods and schools. <sighs> It's it. it's right wingers, but I mean, you know what they say: even the people you hate are wrong, are not always wrong. Yeah. Sometimes they're right. Candace Owens don't like her, but sometimes she says something right. What's his name? Um, I always I'm like I always say his name wrong. Who? The one who's connected to Candace Owens, the light skin dude, Brandon yeah. Tatum. S- some I'm pretty sure he. I, I ain't heard nothing he said that was right. No, nothing. I'm, no, I'm saying I'm sure he says something that you would agree with. But think nothing off the top of the dome. It's not, it's not about you actually hearing it. I'm <laughs> sure everybody you dislike, like they Use say something slang. you like and dislike. Everybody. So, you know, sometimes people get things right. It is what it is. Or they say things you agree with, should I say. NBC News asks rural black voters if the Democrats have done anything for them. That was just them trying to get somebody to pay for something. Now, this, sure. is in, this is crazy. This is in North Carolina, by the yeah. way. <laughs> uh, NBC News asked rural black voters if the Democrats have done anything for them. F no. That's how they no. is in North Carolina. Straight up with you. A news crew from Meet the Press on NBC News went to a rural grocery store in a community of color and asked the Democrats had done anything for black people. Their responses were revealing. F no, no, said one man who walked away as others in the store laughed. <laughs> Take, tucking us down through a girl. Hey, talking us down through girl. That's about it. Talking all, <laughs> taking all our shit like the rest of them. Ain't going to do nothing for us. Um, the segment was introduced as showcasing the pub problem that Democrats have in canvassing black males to vote for their party, especially in some pivotal rural areas in the county, uh, country. NBC reporter uh, Artina Hilton talked to others in the store from North Carolina about why they're so apathetic about politics. Well, you just sit there and you see that your elders say something to you, know the town hall or something like that, and nothing being done about it. After a while, it just becomes a non-factor in your life, said an unidentified customer in the grocery store. You just feel like, I'm going to do what I got to do, survive on a day-to-day, make a way for my family and everything like that, he added. Politics don't really matter. Now, what did I say a few episodes ago, how black men have become completely disillusioned with politics? Yeah, They've taken themselves out of political leadership. they just yeah. like, I'm done. But you see what he said? We survive. Yeah, day-to-day. We do what we got to do. Beans, <laughs> rice, but it should that be all you should you be content with that? Well, I think you become content with that when you know that the this the society the the country that you uh well, can't you just change it. What are you gonna do to change it? Solutions. Take it, yeah, fix take it. So we gonna take it. I'm just saying. How are we gonna take it? That's that, that's when you gotta think about it. You gotta brainstorm. No you gotta, solutions. You provide a solution. So how are we gonna take it? It's easy to just Are you say asking take. Me? I'm asking you. Um, I have my ideas, but my ideas. Oh, are... now you don't want to put it on YouTube because <laughs> you think the man listening in the man. it would not be televised. <laughs> the Bullshit. Man. What? Well, you got anything you believe? Your solution? I don't. I know. I didn't say I had it. I, you know what I said? We ain't gonna take it. Why not? Because it ain't meant for us to take right now. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Because we under the curses. But what, how does that stop you from taking? How does that stop you from? Cur- how does that stop you from taking something when you are put under curses to be uh, under somebody? And until I take the curses off of you, you're not gonna be removed from those curses. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> stop playing around. <laughs> oh, you with the not fucking around coalition? <laughs> Hell no, you know. <laughs> I know you've been trained by them. I knew your ass could shoot. I know he a snitch. I know he tell all those dudes that joined his group. I know he told all their names. But yeah, so a lot of black dudes are just out of politics. Yeah, they are. They went on to go ahead. Yeah, they are. They've 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 removed themselves. I know I made comments saying, you know, why is it? But I'm only saying that because 
I would like to see more black men being involved with being leaders in their community because I think when uh when other races see that it it lets them know no we we're in charge of our community we run our community yeah well you know it's like there's nothing wrong with having women speak but I mean damn it would be nice to see a, a, a black male speak up for his community. Well, you know, uh, there are black men who speak there up. There are. Them. Yeah. But they just don't get the notoriety. They don't get the attention. Well, you shouldn't need attention. And that's to not speak. by accident. Well, you shouldn't need attention to do what's right. I'm not. I'm not. When I, I know, say I know attention, what you're saying. I mean, it's not being shown. I, I know what you're saying, but it doesn't need to be shown. You just do it. But you remember, you know how they talk about how when, uh, whenever cops come over to someone's house, and the first person they ask for when they go to a, any other household, is, where's the man of the house? Or when they come to a black household, they say, where's your mom? Or where's who's who, where's the mother at or something? Because they know who they know who run it. So they don't even ask <laughs> for the man. Matter of fact, I, you see videos of a man and a woman. And the cops. Black shit. man and woman. Standing there talking to a cop. And, and eye contact is. To the black woman. And the black man be sitting there like. <laughs> I saw, I think it was a TV show where the, they talked about this. Where they put a a scene in the movie or a TV show where he was standing there talking to the cop and when he was talking to his wife, he kept addressing his wife. He said, hey, you talking to me. Why are you talking to her? Well, <laughs> uh, Pastor Derby yeah. had a uh, video and he was saying how him and his wife was in the airport. And they kept talking to her. And he said, no, you don't address my wife, you address me. Yeah. I- I'm the head of the household. But see, that's been a thing that's been, it's become a thing in the black community for the last 60 plus years of <laughs> you address her. Cause, but, uh, because normally she's in front when yeah. you go up to the airport, she's in front and you, you know, you just stand behind that, but that's not normally. Well, I think it also happens to a situation <laughs> where if we want to talk about this idea of things being passed down through generations, normally the threat was Big black men. Oh. So when the cops come around, just let her handle it. Because if I talk, it's going to, yeah. the, the intensity going to be too high. Yeah. So just let, just go tell him. And you can also know. view it as a sign of her being protective over you over too. Him. So, so this was black women trying to protect their husband. And I think that's still what goes on today. Yeah. The black woman to... is very protective. So they know when he interact with him, it, it goes left quick. Yeah. So let me just talk to him. It's just, just to just get rid of him, just going by his business so we can just go back by our lives. But that's become a thing where it's went across the board now. Because honestly, you, you hear stories about uh, black women saying how, you know, they daughter, they not, you know, they're not worried about their daughters they're going out. Sons. They're worried about the son. Every time they leave the house, they're scared. They're worried about their son. They they don't really say that about their daughter. Well, they say that about the daughter, too. I'm just but saying it, they realize that their son is the target. Well, you're talking about police and stuff. Police. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm not talking about, like, regular now in the neighborhood because niggas are weirdos. Yeah, weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, yeah, shit, sometimes have, they have to know good. Yeah. They, yeah. As Biden and uh, him wants to interview a business owner at the store. As Biden and generally the Democratic Party uh, have been fulfilled promises, have they fulfilled promises that they made over the last couple of years? Hilton asked. To me, in a small town like this, it really doesn't matter who you have in office. The effect that we experience is the same, responded Michael Covington. If it don't matter, it don't matter if it's Biden, it don't matter if it's Trump, exactly, it don't matter sir. if it's Obama or Clinton or Bush, it really doesn't matter, he explained. What we feel down here is exactly the same. They could never even tell us who the president is. And we were still <laughs> going to be exactly the same. You know what I mean? Numerous polling shows that uh, apathy towards Democrats is not limited to black voters in rural regions. Experts believe that the party is hurting towards catastrophic, uh, hurling uh, towards cat- catastrophic losses in a midterm election that will severely hamstring President Joe Biden's efforts to push forward his agenda. Yeah. <sighs> Here's the video here. You wanted to show a little bit of this? With the midterm elections approaching, let's turn to our county to county series people typically think. And in fact, in a state like North Carolina, many of the rural counties are actually majority minority. And that's the case in Anson County, North Carolina, which is down. And listen, take a listen to some of the work that they've done on the ground. It may sound like a simple act, but for black residents in rural Anson County, North Carolina, this kind of visit from a civic group is rare. Violence, poverty, just things that can be improved. You know, in Anson County. Do you have a fish plate? <laughs> We're going to get to that later. <laughs> those young men, black men under 40, turned out at 35% in the 2020 general election. And so actually having a chance to have conversation with them 
and the fact that they really seem to feel, you know, kind of validated to be heard. The group's argument is essentially that having these door-to-door conversations and giving people the chance to just feel heard and to say what they'd like to see reflected back to them in their community is the first key step in getting... So are you saying that you had to go to these men, these black men, and ask them what they want, and they find, oh, y'all care now? <laughs> y'all actually going to listen to what I got to say? I've been saying it for years. Now <laughs> you want to hear? Oh, finally. Somebody probably said, yeah, get the fuck out. Get the fuck away from my dough. Get the fuck away from my dough with that bullshit. <laughs> Biden ain't shit. Trump won't shit, and whoever you get in there next ain't gonna be you shit. Ain't shit. <laughs> this is nah, some. Hold on, hold on, I know you ready to go in. I reason why I brought up the fish plate a while ago. <laughs> I thought they had a fish plate. Is because they're talking about why the Democrats are losing support. And there's a person we've been talking about since we started doing this damn channel. It's Jim Clyburn or Clyburn. It's world famous. <laughs> 2020 Low Country Edition Fish Fry. That just has coon written all over it. Now, hold on. We, we had a discussion about it. I disagree. Yeah. Having a fish fry is not coonish. Having a fish fry is not coonish when it's Isn't normal. that cultural? That's cultural. If something is in your culture and your elected officials do that to show rep- that's not coonish. That's, Col- that's is that culture. everybody's cultural culture in South Carolina or... Does it pertain to everyone or specifically the black community having a fish fry? Well, I, I mean, if he's a black man, and so I'm pretty sure the fish fry would be something that he deems a part of his culture. Fish he's pandering, fry. dude. That's pan. Hold on, hold, hold, hold. Is there a difference between boot pan- licking? Is there a difference? <laughs> is there a difference between pandering and coonish, and just simply doing something? Oh, this is genuine. culturally. Huh? You think this is genuinely culturally no, what he's no, doing? Let me. I'm not saying why he's doing it. I'm, okay, we're not talking about why anybody else would do it. We're talking about why he's doing it. I wouldn't have a problem if this is just a normal thing. It is. He said for it's, him. He says he. I think he has this. Um, yeah, we know why he have it every year or and whenever he has it. Carbon asked me to get out of there. <laughs> you just don't like Clyburn. a fish fry. You mad at the fish fry? Now I know and I agree that he's having this fish fry for obvious reasons to just you know you know. I took issue with him when the dude was pressing him about our reparations. He did that. <laughs> you, you think? Yeah, when he did that, and then shit was done when he did that shit for the Native Americans. Oh, that's when it was a oh, damn nail in the coffin. But that was that was a land dispute that he simply saw. He didn't give him nothing. It was a land dispute, wasn't it? <laughs> he gonna swing on me. <laughs> Flyborn gotta go. It's just as simple well, as that. Well, the person, there's another person who people are talking about. This woman here, Val Demi. We talked about her last week, remember? When she was at the thing speaking up for immigrants. Who's she got to say this time? And let me say this. We can talk about a woman's right to choose her own destiny. When I decided to start my family, I didn't ask the governor's permission. I didn't ask my congressman permission. I dang on sure didn't ask my senator's permission. And they need to get out of our business and leave the personal decisions, the intimate decision to women. Am I right about that? We are not going back. We're not sitting down. We're not shutting up. We're going to fight and fight and fight some more for a woman's right to choose. But I don't get it. Wouldn't you still be had a right to choose they got rid of Roe versus Wade? Because it would still be states that allow it. But she, then they say, well, you have to travel. And she worried about Roe versus Ray when there's a whole bunch of poverty going on. You notice how she had the Spanish on top of the English? Normally, it's the English on top of the Spanish. Well, clearly, she's pushing towards the immigrant community there, yeah. She need to go, too. But Democrats in general are doing that, pushing towards to the immigrants. They, they started pushing towards the immigrants in 2016, the Mexicans. Remember, they, they didn't really... Hillary Clinton, she thought she just had the black vote in the bag, and she really did. Yeah, she thought she had the black vote in the bag because she had hot sauce in her bag. <laughs> so she was really pandering to the Hispanics, that, and Bernie Sanders did it in 2020. Uh, Joe Biden did it in 2020 until the very last couple of weeks of the election. They come to the niggas and say, oh, yeah, remember to vote for me. 
And if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. That shit is done. But this is, uh, somebody used this right here. This is Val Demings. This is an attack on her. They said that she, forget her. She was okay in SWAT, lives, uh, uh, SWAT uh, teams to go into barbershops. <laughs> Over a barbershop license? I don't know if it, yeah. So this is nigga, this is literally, uh, this, this is what she viewed a niggas <laughs> congregating on the streets. Because, you know, like, black men congregate in a barbershop. <laughs> So to launch wait, wait. an attack on them. Hold up. I, I didn't realize it was segue this way. We were just talking about black men with disillusioned with politics. This is our, why. Because they our, get attacked. <laughs> they get, they and it's a damn black woman that's attacking them. And a black sheriff. She's the white man, literally. Well, he, no, it's a uh, black sheriff doing it. Oh, I thought you said it was. Uh, I think it's her husband, huh? That's her husband? Yeah, Jerry, Jerry Demings. Yep. Yeah. Her and her husband is launching an attack. <laughs> now, this is old, obviously. This is 2014, but they did it. But uh, you see, Florida uh, sheriff deputies, under the guise of checking professional licenses, raided right an Orlando area barbershop using SWAT light tactics back in 2010, and now a federal appeals court has ruled that the search was illegal. Mm -hmm. In a ruling that allows the lawsuit against the department that precedes the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, strongly criticized the Orange County Sheriff's Office for storming and strictly storming their strictly skilled barbershop four years ago with some of the team members dressed in ballistic vests and masks with the guns drawn and deputies rushed into the target's de destination handcuffed the uh, stunned occupants and demanded to see the barber's license <laughs> the court wrote the raid was one of the several was one of several deputies carried out uh, against minority owned barbershops and salons in 2010 they went out to salons too so they were going out to black <laughs> the black woman was congregating too <laughs> it's on the ass so wait, <laughs> was this a crackdown on licenses? The like really SWAT teams? You know, I think it's ridiculous that you have to. <laughs> you know that black women, you have to go to school for corn rolling braiding. But you know how to do this since you that's was your, a little that's girl. That's your cultural thing. But they make you go get a license to do that. Imagine having to go that's get a license. Absurd. To just, go get something you do culturally. You got to do a license. Get a license for doing something your culture is based on. You do this. This is you. I hope to God that the person that's teaching you is not a non-black person. It's even worse then. Because they, they walk in there and they you. like. <laughs> so the dudes, a black man, you got to go to them to cut hair the way you know how you know how you like to cut your hair. This is communal. This is community. This is culture. And you got to go to them to learn how to cut their hair. Oh, and then they go get their hair cut. That's the, this is the best experience I ever had at a barbershop. Yeah, man, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I got a fade and everything. Yeah. All right, so let me... Uh, Give me a goatee. And my beard is lined up. Wow. <laughs> get a fade. <laughs> clean. All right. <clears throat> this is another one. This right here is going to go into the... Uh, once again, they're asking the question, why are the support for them dropping? And this is their answer to it. I want to ask about our domestic politics here, Nola, because, look, Putin has certainly interfered in U.S. elections uh, many times. Russia has interfered in U.S. elections many times. Um, but in 2016, we... They still pushing this? Russia? They still pushing the Russia thing that black people just voted for Trump because of Russia. Lady, why you got your breasts exposed? Hey, she doing... Hey, what's the difference between what she doing <laughs> and what the white women be doing? They had their legs showing on Fox and... So, hey, she's showing. Now, you know you thicker than a bowl of grits. <laughs> she got to show what she got. Really saw it punctuated and focused specifically on black voters. What might he do this go round uh, to interfere in our election process, particularly given that the Republicans who've been echoing his talking points um, stand to regain control of Congress? Well, you know, the one thing that you can rely on Putin for is that he's going to Putin. Putin is always going to Putin. So she what? ain't said nothing and the, and the Putin is one thing you can rely on Putin is that Putin always gonna be Putin so he like to pass gas that Putin. means that much of the same tactics deployed will be deployed again and you see it with the rhetoric and propaganda around the war domestically and even on the African continent there was a report in the Ethiopian news last week or so that showed Africans lining up to fight um, for Russia but didn't the Pope just come out and blame NATO for Ukraine Look it up. It just it's a big it's a story. The Pope came out and said it's Ukraine's fault. I mean, sorry, NATO's fault. <laughs> you the NATO was uh uh 
pushing up on Russia, and Russia finally broke. That's what happened. That's what the, that's what the, their Pope said. And so I bring that up to say that disinformation is rampant. Disinformation is rampant with the black and brown. So, oh, here we go with the black and brown here in the U.S. and Latin hold on, hold on. America and also in Africa. It, it, with the black and brown communities here in the U.S. and Latin America and also in Africa. Now, Damn. You notice now they didn't lump in to Latin America. No, what? In what Africa. Is, what does the diff- disinformation in Latin America and Africa have to do with American elections? You see how they're trying to muddy the waters and just tie? They're now tying voting. Africa? Voting is now including Latin America and Africa in America. But this is a, this is America. American politics. It, invo- it involves American citizens. citizens. That's, I don't understand. But somehow, y'all have to go with this net. It's just, it's so weird to me. I, I don't understand. I t- it's just it's just getting crazy it's like and more and more people just like why are they always tying in all these these different groups that don't have like she's you, really scratching it when you saw that 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 pastor the reverend she tied in abortion with trans children so it's like they just tying everybody who's not a straight white male is the same <laughs> everybody who's not a straight white male is just a big group outside of them it's just crazy. How they? It's crazy. Now the good news is, is that because we did experience this, there has been an increased uh, funding package, an, an increased attention in the cyber community, and because of all of these cyber attacks that Russia has deployed on multiple states, including Ukraine, there have been partnerships and allyships already coming together because yeah. of Putin's earlier actions. Yeah. So-, so the propaganda is turning early. What you mean? Y'all going y'all turning out the propaganda even more now. <laughs> she didn't say nothing. She, she didn't say nothing. She didn't say what disinformation was being released. It's gone from misinformation to disinformation. Now, <laughs> you showed you brought this right here up. <laughs> so we show this video. Yeah. All right. Now you you brought this video up. <laughs> Who'd you get? What did you first see this? I saw this on uh, B one. B1. Uh, uh Professor Black True. So <laughs> and I was I don't know, I was just amazed that every last black politician on here said nothing about repairing the black community, nothing about reparations. It was simply self. The the lady Cheryl Beasley, you should vote for her because she's a woman. Then it was another dude, uh, what was the other dude? Uh one dude said, well, you should vote for him because he's with the LGBTQ shit. Yeah. And I forgot about what the other dude was running on. But nothing was based on us. And they made sure that they said black and brown, which is what they do now. Yeah, that's what they do. All right, so let me show the video here. Acting how cases are adjudicated in our criminal justice system, our civil courts. And I think it's important, particularly in Maryland, which is one of the most diverse states in the country, it's time that we have an attorney general who reflects that diversity. Now, who was it written by? April Ryan. <laughs> she would agree on that. So my, has she failed? So, okay. We're from being a White House correspondent. To working at the Grio. Yeah. Well, I think she was on CNN. Well, she was doing that when she, she was, was at the White House. Anyway, she's a she probably, commentator. She probably still comes on as a commentator sometimes. You had, uh, what's her name? Um, who, now you have to ask the question. What's the one who went to ESPN? Um, Angela, Angela Rye, Rye went, went to ESPN. Red, with lettuce and tomatoes I don't know what happened to Bukari Sellers. Merritt, he's trying to run for attorney general. Why all of a sudden did April Ryan leave after Trump's presidency? Because he ain't no money. She stayed in the White House pressing and asking questions, but when Biden came, it was time to go. Yeah, we don't need you here asking no questions. There's, there's nothing you can ask. We don't, you're not going to ask no tough questions. You go viral and get cheers when you want to get say shit. She won't gonna ever say shit no way. What are your top three issues um, as a candidate? Uh, no, I'm just saying, what? <laughs> let's see what your top three issues is. Attorney General for the state of Maryland. 
top three issues, and I'll go into as much detail as you want, certainly public safety, civil rights, and workers' rights. What civil rights do we need? What civil rights do Maryland need as far as? What? Aren't workers' rights civil rights? <laughs> aren't there, like, base rights is workers' rights? You deserve to work and get fair treatment? He like, said public safety. Okay. Civil rights. And workers' rights. But that's kind of the same thing. And it's basic rights. rights. Civil rights are basic. Black people are the only people that ask for civil rights. Everyone else asks for Latino rights. Hell, even so, white rights. Is a, Asian rights. Is a public safety going to be a uh, stop and frisk? You saying he going to push? Yeah. What, what, what public safety? Maryland. We know Baltimore is rough as hell. Do they got a lot of guns there? I don't know if they have a lot of guns I don't know if they got there. guns, but... Niggas is rough in Baltimore. Yeah, it's, 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 it has a it has a stereotype history. So you're running on public safety, civil rights, and workers' rights. With everything going on, that's your three issues that you running on. Well, they said the crime is up. Now, maybe his civil rights includes the criminal justice reform or something like they always do when it's somebody black. When you want to talk to black people, hey, criminal justice reform. I'm like, hey man, I'm not a criminal. Well, damn, everybody working on that. If everybody working on the same Why issue. Why ain't it getting done? Exactly. So somebody needs to start working on reparations. <laughs> Let me go ahead and play. You ready? Yeah. There are more priorities than that in the Office of the Attorney General, but those are areas where I think we need to make greater progress. The Attorney General in Maryland needs the authority to enforce civil rights laws. When you see racial discrimination in the workplace or in housing, most people believe that the Attorney General can bring an action. That's not the case in Maryland. Workplace uh, rights as well, protecting workers, things like um, wage theft, uh, things like uh, labor trafficking. We often think about sex trafficking. Labor trafficking. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Isn't he talking about immigrants with that? People Maybe work, so. People work on the, on the table, table, being paid money less than the value. That's uh, look at, look at who he got behind him, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. That should tell you if he got that drunk behind him, yeah, that should tell now. you everything. Yeah. She got a bottle of liquor stashed in her bra. <laughs> he got Nancy Pelosi standing behind him, so that tell me everything I need to know about him. Yeah. It's a no. Which is on the rise across this country, but also labor trafficking um, and uh, misclassification of workers so as to deprive them of, of benefits and wages. That's very important. I intend to pursue that uh, as uh, the attorney general. And then, of course, we talked about public safety and another component. Uh, but if the what are your poll numbers looking like? I am the only candidate in this race who has had two successful statewide elections. And I knew it was going to be really important to poll well. I knew it was going to be important to perform well in all the indicators that we use to determine likelihood of success. And thankfully, we've been doing really, really great. Uh, we've got a, a lot of excitement here in this state by people who, with whom we've been building relationships for over a decade. I've been a statewide elected official for over a decade now. And so we're really building upon those relationships and really uh, meeting people where they are and hearing from them about what their issues are and engaging folks uh, who otherwise wouldn't be engaged. Uh, I hope that people, not just in North Carolina, but across this country really appreciate the magnitude of this election and really understand that my candidacy uh, really offers the best opportunity to expand the majority in the Senate. We can do this. Have you seen a change in attitudes in Texas for you? Are you seeing more goodwill versus what we tend to... <laughs> yes, Ahmaud Aubrey, uh Mom. Not Ahmaud Aubrey. Is that Ahmaud Aubrey? Yes, that's his mother. Yeah. That's his mother. It's funny, ben Trump, peoples, the peoples. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to pick at his accent. Perceive and see in reality um, when there's a victory on matters of civil rights. We have good will, and I think that it's probably yeah, the yeah. trend that, you know, maybe. <laughs> Got to get that photo out with the Hispanics. That's Asians, ain't it? Hey, oh, they all the same. <laughs> This isn't a, a, a black attorney looking to advocate for a black community, but maybe this is a constitutional attorney hoping to preserve basic principles of, uh, of our democracy, uh, where Republicans have was at odds with basic tenets of our, our democracy, like voting rights for all. Here we go with those bull voting rights for who, sir? 
We got our voting rights. The the voting rights rhetoric the Democrats are pushing is really not it's not for black people. They're using black people to spearhead the legislation they want to pass when it comes to voting. It has that's for illegal Ghost. immigrants. That's who that's really for. Uh, like, um, you know, uh, having their day in court, law and order, uh, used to be public in value. Uh, but, but what we saw happen in South Georgia was an example of, of law and order. And what we see happening in Texas day in and day out is an example of lawlessness. If black and brown voter engagement increased just marginally because they're inspired by uh, Ahmaud Arbery's case and uh, the work that we've been doing with the White House and around the country and uh, representing families before the U.S. Senate and, so, and, and, and being involved in legislation. How many so people, black and brown. Go ahead. How many people got work because of this man? How many people got a job because of George Floyd? So many people got positions of power and influence. Because of that man's death. Ain't that strange when people eat off of your death? How is Ahmaud Arbery's death inspiring brown people to get out and vote? I don't know what brown means no more. It's, I'm just, we've said, yeah, we, we've def, we try to define this. I've heard, we're going to talk about the idea of Latino later. I've heard brown mean Mexican. I've heard brown mean. His uh, Latino, which is two separate Spanish types, but they kind of now it's including some people who are black. They're considered brown. So I, I don't know anybody who's uh, outside of America, South or Caribbean, South America, Mexico. That's considered brown all of a sudden. Pretty much what they try to do. It's all, I don't know if they just mean Mexicans or they mean anybody South of America. <laughs> if uh if we if we can increase black and brown voter turnout even marginally democrats can flip texas you ain't flipping texas because there's a lot of niggas that's gonna vote republican not one open gate person in the senate and then if you are elected how it would be transformational i will say this if we're ever going to have a country that reflects the fullness of the american promise if what I call the basic bargain, if that's going to become accessible to everybody, then you know what? We're going to have to have a government that reflects the fullness of the American experience. We are having conversations right now about pivotal policy issues, about issues as foundational uh, to this experiment in democracy as the right to vote. Here we go with the bullshit. Uh, yeah, uh, we don't need to know more. They keep pushing You're talking this. about voting. So... Merritt wants you to vote for him because he's connected to George Floyd and Mont Aubrey. You know me, so vote for me. Uh, the other guy wants you to vote for him for representation. The woman wants you to vote for her, at least in the writing part of section, because, hey, vote for her. She's a woman, and there's no female uh, U.S. Senate member, so vote for her. And the other person say, vote for me because I'm gay. <laughs> like you said, none of them say anything. And this is, this is the choices. It's voting rights. That's what you. That's what we need to fight for. We need to fight for you to vote for me. You need to vote for me, so that you can vote for me next election too. <laughs> vote for me so that you can keep voting for me. That's what they're offering. They're not offering a damn thing. That's <laughs> <to> nothing. <laughs> All right, we go to the next article because now they're saying if you disagree with what they're saying, it's because misinformation. Misinformation may only worsen for black voters and lead up to election, expert warns. Voters of color <laughs> it said black. are targeted with disinformation narratives specifically designed to suppress turnout, Representative G.K. Butterfield said during a hearing. Voters of color. So they're saying you're being hit with misinformation so you don't feel like you want to vote. Well, no. what if it's truth? <laughs> I'm getting hit with a lot of truth. So who they go, who are, I wonder at some point when they're going to when are they going to start labeling certain YouTube channels are pushing misinformation about republic I mean about uh politicians. So when we sit here and say this politician ain't shit, that one ain't shit, at some point are they going to start you know how when you talk about uh covid, when you talk about anything historical war, JFK assassination, they'll put a little ticker under your video. Yeah. So they, 
By the way, more context. Look at this. What are you going to start doing when we talk about politicians? Soon. You say a politician's name, and they're going to put a bubble underneath the video saying, check this stuff out to learn more about this person. Well, I feel like that's what AOC was trying to do. Well, yeah. With probably. Jimmy Dore. Yeah. Trying to say violence. Words violence. is violence. Yeah. This, this is, we're in a world where when they wrote that book, when he wrote that book in 1984, you would never think they would say the stuff they're saying. We got the Ministry of Truth now, which Joe Biden just set up. And you know Republicans was calling that out. That's what ministry, they called it. Ministry of Truth. On Fox News, they called it Ministry of Truth. But it was called, uh, the, the what they named it was disinformation something. I forgot what they called it. Disinformation, uh, something. Yeah, I forgot the name of it. Pretty sure y'all already heard of it. We got people saying, helping Ukraine go to war is peace. Isn't that war is peace? <laughs> oh, misinformation. Oh, um, um, how do you say it? Freedom is bondage. Letting you have freedom, you're bonded. Because you find out stuff. You don't know how to decipher between fall, fake stuff, and real stuff. Freedom is, is slavery. You need us to tell you what you need to know. That's true freedom. So you can just not have to worry about anything. That sounds like Eve eating the apple from the tree. What? <laughs> we don't want... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my God! Expert witnesses have warned members of Congress that misinformation targeting Black voters and other voters of color is likely to intensify as the midterm elections unfold. So, truth, Joy Cheney, an executive director of the National Urban League's Washington bureau, testified Thursday in a virtual he- virtual hearing of the House Administration Subcommittee on Electors elections that the civil rights organization had noted an increasing number of disinformation campaigns that directly <sighs> targeted Black communities and the civil rights that have long in the in the civil rights that have long been fought for. Further. These discrimination, discrimination, uh, disinformation attacks on Black communities are also a broader attack on our democracy and a threat to the national security of this nation. We saw Obama start this campaign. This disinformation is a threat to our democracy. So they started it in January. When they actually started it with Trump, when I said he was a threat to democracy, mm. but they started this disinformation thing, which means internet people on the internet talking amongst themselves like they've been doing forever. This is now a threat. We can't control what they're saying, and when we try to control what they're saying, it looks crazy. When we hit, when we hide stories and ban people for saying stuff, it looks worse on us. So we need to convince the people to censor themselves. And I find I find myself doing it when we're talking. I'll just be talking, and I'll stop myself from saying a word because I know you YouTube don't want me to say it. I try not to censor myself. I'll actually like I have to remind me, no, just say what you're gonna say because if I don't. They are, they have already trained us to know what not to say. Well, yeah, that's what they were doing when when the whole during the whole COVID thing and the vaccine thing when you couldn't say certain things because it was yeah this misinformation medical then. misinformation. So now you be you be like up oh. you stop you self censor yeah because you be trying to self censor me ah you can't say that no don't, no. don't say that <laughs> don't don't because you be going, you be trying to go off. <laughs> It, it exists. And now they're trying to expand it even further to not just cert- certain uh, social media platforms. They're trying to make you have control what you say in any discussion. So now when you're not even on the internet. You're just talking amongst people. You say certain things. You're supposed to say, I don't know about that, man. That might not be true. That might be disinformation. So now you, you want to, they want you to police yourselves on information. To not just say normally, I don't know, man. I don't think that's true, but it might be true. Who knows? What's what is normal to say? They now want you to call that person and say that's disinformation. <laughs> you, you're supposed to shut down any theories because it's all a conspiracy theory, quote unquote. And now you're supposed to police how you talk to people and how they talk to you. Yeah. And it's going I, three years ago. I would not think it would happen this fast. Three years ago, I would have said, "Nah, people gonna say what they want to say. They, it's gonna be hard." It ain't. <laughs> they did it in two years and we already this far. We about about 40% of the way already. 2.30. They want to have us by 2.30. <laughs> That's the target date. 2030. 2030 is the big year. They are, we already 40% of the way. To our, we already censoring our, ourselves. Something to happen and somebody be like, I don't think that's true and start your conspiracy theory. This is disinformation. They got people, these uh, uh, um, uh, companies, I mean these platforms these news platforms, these sites, MSNBC, News, uh, Newsweek, they got fact checkers. 
So now if you say something on social media and it goes viral, they'll, this publication will come out and fact check you. Say you lying. They're discrediting your character at that point. Now you don't, now when you say you research, think about this for a second. For the last two years, when they ask you to take that jab and you say, nah, I did some research. Oh, research? You've been going to the internet? They mock people for saying they did research. Well, what do they do when they do their research? They assume you're not smart enough to do research. Just listen to the doctors. It's in, it was insane for the first time in history, people were mocked for actually educating themselves and go find something out. You're not supposed to go find nothing out. You're supposed to believe what they say. Well, that didn't work. It did. Not it absolutely worked. I'm not saying on everybody. For the majority of the world, it worked. And what, well, and what happened? They were weeding out the weak in a scrum. And what happened? When you said certain things, what happened? That's disinformation. People was policing people. They were doing it then. Now, it calmed down because they ain't talking about it no more that much. But it showed that when they want to turn it up, they can turn it up. Now, it's, what happens when they send a bug out that really put people in the dirt? It's going to be over. I'm just sitting back waiting for when the, the fire sees is over. <laughs> Seeing what they're going to do to us next. Shit. Should you just wait? What you mean? So you, <laughs> should we do something about it? So you just want to wait? Oh, you can plan and prepare and Get stuff in order and um. No, no, stop them. No, well, if you don't know what they're doing, how you gonna stop them? You do know what they're doing. What they doing? What you mean? You mean guess what they doing? What they planning on coming up with next? You don't even know what they're doing. You just know you. You just know what you oh. don't want them to do. And you don't allow it. Okay. Speaking of this, uh, voter rights they're talking about and this police reform and civil rights they want to give people. There's a video of a cop manhandling a black woman. He's trying, I guess, I don't know if he's trying to arrest her or whatever. What is going on with cops? Is he white? Yeah, he's white, I think. We were was, we was seeing this video. When, yep. when do we get to a point where officers are struggling to subdue one person? A what? He a big ass dude. He's Look, struggling with his one person. She a lioness. <laughs> it's crazy, watch this. Wait, wait! Oh, damn. What are you doing? Sir! 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 Oh, my God! He's punching you! Oh, my God! Sir! Sir, stop! Now, the way he's punching this woman, he punches, like, he, he's not even punching her like a man. It's like, do he know how to throw a punch? It was like... Now, I'm not saying I want him to throw a proper punch. No. But the way he's but, throwing it, it's like he... If that was a dude... He gets ass whooped. Yeah, it's like, it's like he might have got dusted off. I thought the woman's supposed to arrest her. What? It's a woman. Ain't it? What is it? A female cop? Yes. So why wasn't she down there rolling on the ground with she her? She was supposed to be the one that handled that situation. I said it before. Self policing. It's, it's going to go like this every time. You. <laughs> there's a story, I forgot to bring it up, of a black man who started a security company. Hold on. This is the black dude right here. Foundational, foundationally black owned security company. No white dollars involved in my company. Tones Tactical Services LLC, even in the business we represent. Heads on the table. So I said, I, I said I'm not gonna judge people because I ain't doing it. I think it's a thing that needs to be done, but I'm not doing it, so I can't judge people. He did it. He started his own security company. Now I don't know if he does uh private security. I don't think he's doing uh, public, public service uh, security, like policing type stuff. You have to get that registered and all that. But still, imagine this expanded. Remember, when, when was that? Remember a couple of years ago, there was something in uh, Detroit. Was it Detroit? Mm. The Detroit 300? Yeah. Where well, those 300 black men were told the gang members. And st- it, wasn't, it wasn't Detroit. It was another city. I can't, it might have been Detroit. We were told the gang members either leave or come over here and we're going to help you get a job. Yeah. He told him, leave or get, we come That's to us. That's being get proactive. Yeah, but I, I can't remember. What, I think that was in like 2000 and that was a long time ago. It was years ago. 
I can't remember what happened. But yeah. Right, let me show this other situation that happened. Eight month old baby dies after being left in a car while father was arrested. Now, were they black? Yeah, it's black. Listen, listen, listen. I just need to read the first paragraph. When you see how they worded it, it's gonna be like, wait, watch how they watch how they did this. Shouldn't they be held responsible for that? Both should, I say. But watch this: an eight month old baby has died after her father left her in a car while he was getting arrested. <laughs> According to the, he ran. No, he was getting arrested. He didn't. He didn't fight. So he didn't say my kid is in the car. That's what they said. He didn't say the kid was in the car. They said. Now this is their. They said he didn't say the kid was in the car, but I thought cops automatically check the car anyway. He arrested. The first thing you do is check his car for anything. Supposed to get towed. <clears throat> no, <clears throat> he would get his car would get searched because if he's under arrest, you would search his car to see if he got anything else on him, a gun, drugs. They probably left the baby in there intentionally. I don't know about that, but I found it crazy how I feel like if you had a warrant, why are you ride around with your child in the car with you? So I blame him for putting his kid in a situation like that. But for the cops <laughs> to completely absolve themselves, say, hey, he left his kid in the car when we arrested him. I seriously, seriously doubt. It's not impossible, but I seriously doubt he didn't tell them that the kid was in the car. And I found it weird. They didn't even, they didn't even search the car. How is that possible? On Tuesday, 20-year-old David Japez McCory arrived in the lobby of the police station around 2.17 p.m. The police department said in a press release he was meeting with a property custodian. The police found a probation warrant, violation warrant for his arrest. He was taken to custody there and transported to uh, Gwinnett County Jail without incident, as in he didn't fight it. So he showed up. He met with a property custodian. They found out he had a warrant. He didn't fight it. He went to jail. And they, they just took him. And didn't search his car. Nothing. Now, maybe he wasn't near his car. They didn't know he drove there or something. But why would he say, I got a baby in the car? They said he, If uh, he didn't say that, he ain't shit. That's what I was saying. If I, I'm not absorbing him at all. That's why I said both. Nearly seven hours later at 9 p.m., an eight-year-old was brought to the Plea Mount Eastside Emergency Room. Her grandmother, who brought her to the hospital, indicated she was left in the car after a traffic stop. Now, I said a traffic stop. The hospital staff determined the baby was was dead. She was his daughter. A Snyville police sergeant uh, who was working off duty in the hospital was told by staff, police found Walter 2007, 2007 Max uh, Mazda 3 in the parking lot of City Hall, which was near the police station. While this entire interaction with the police station, from entering the lobby to going to the county jail, was recorded on body camera, police said he never mentioned he had an infant daughter was in the vehicle. Snyville Police Department requested the Georgia Bureau of Investigation take over as the primary investigating agency for this case. CBS News has reached out to the Bureau for more information or awaiting response. The child's case, cause of death, was not released. <laughs> that case is strange. What you thinking? See, that's the thing. Y'all always got arrest warrants out for y'all. How do y'all always have some sort of arrest warrant out for y'all? It's it's crazy. You have an eight month year old daughter in a car, and you don't mention to the police officers my daughter is out there in the car. <laughs> I, I don't know. I said that's what they said. He should be charged. That's what they said. Now, yes, he should be. I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm saying that's what they said. If that's not true, what do you think? If that's not true, and he told that he, he told him that he had his eight month daughter in the car and they didn't go get his daughter, then they should be charged. Crazy man. Look at this. Judge lets to lose a uh, Tulsa race massacre reparation lawsuit proceed. An Oklahoma judge ruled Monday that a lawsuit seeking reparations for the 1921 Tulsa race massacre can proceed, bringing new hope for the. Uh, for some measure of justice for the three survivors of our, of, our, of the deadly racist rampage who are now over 100 years old and were in the courtroom for the decision. Shouldn't you know be, what? Y'all going to say they're going to be died. They're going to be dead before they get a damn reparation. Now, we were told 
that reparations should not be given because you weren't a slave. You didn't go through Jim Crow. You was you wasn't there. They were there. What's the why ain't they just giving it to them? I don't understand how they have this happened when they were three and four, why five they, years old, and they are over a hundred years and they still have not received any repair for what happened to them. Shouldn't this be a easy should this, this would be an easy case, right? They, this is what they're telling us. They have to go to court to fight for it. But Japanese uh, no, they, people they fought for it. They got it though. That's the difference. Are they gonna get it? The fact that they, had, we were told the reason why reparations were not a measure, was not, shouldn't happen in America because nobody alive now was a slave owner or passed these laws and all this stuff. And nobody uh, alive now went through that stuff. They did. Just give, they should just get it, right? It, it should be a walk in the park to give it to them. They waiting for them to die. <laughs> so they can say, oh, well, you didn't go through it. They did. Like they're over a hundred years old. Our I listeners mean, and viewers. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Hell, at this point, it's gonna have to go to the day if they got kids. Well, that's what they. That's when they're gonna start saying fund, give open a fund or some type of program or don't. Well, no, that's what they were saying, and they said no. That's my saying. They're gonna wait for them to get up out of here so they could do that. That's that's <laughs> that's that's really the plan. It's, it's just sad they refuse to give you anything. But all right, now this is a um, a video from Democracy Now talking about Harvard, talking about their uh, connections to slavery, how it profited and stuff. I'm not going to watch the whole thing. It's going to show a clip. Democracy Now co-host Nermeen Sheikh. Hi, Amy, and welcome to our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. Harvard University has pledged to spend $100 million to redress the school's deep ties to slavery. The move comes after the school issued a 130-page report Tuesday that revealed at least 41 prominent people connected to the school owned enslaved people. The report states, quote, enslaved men and women served Harvard presidents and professors and fed and cared for Harvard students. Moreover, throughout this period and well into the 19th century, the university and its donors benefited from extensive financial ties to slavery. Harvard School newspaper, The Crimson, dedicated its front page listing the names of individuals enslaved by leadership, faculty, staff, and donors at Harvard University between 1636 and— You saw they had Hebrew names, some of them? Mm, you see it, too? Diana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Titus. Like, like, all these names. Leadership, faculty, Juba. staff, and donors at Harvard University between 1636 and 1783. The Harvard Crimson wrote, almost certainly an undercrown. The editor's note added, quote, Hannibal, Hannibal. <laughs> Samuel, yeah, Mira, Zila, yep. Jude. Some These people, <laughs> huh? they were really a lot of double names. Yeah, Zila. People. We often know. By the way, some of them had. Um, if you look, some of them have Portuguese names. The Harvard Crimson wrote almost certainly an undercrown. The editors. Know we see the Scorpio. Some of these names are uh, Portuguese, and look into the history of black people in you know, in that area or southern Spain. Some of these names. Obadiah. Well, that's, the, that's directly from the Bible. Yeah. Some of these names are uh, Spanish. Or Portuguese, or uh, one of those type of countries. Look into the history of that, and you'll 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 see why. But yeah, a lot of those people traveled from there straight to America. Some of them went to West Africa, and uh, yeah. Note added, quote, for these people, we often know only their nicknames. For a few, we know only their race and gender. This is the result of the systemic erasure that to this day continues to deny enslaved people their histories, the Harvard Crimson said. We begin today looking more at the new report, Harvard and the Legacy of Slavery, which is accompanied by a short video. This is an excerpt about how enslaved people were used to serve Harvard students and faculty. The evidence of the legacy of slavery at Harvard is in the landscape. You can go to the old burial ground and you can see the headstones for two enslaved people. One of them, a girl named Cicely, was enslaved to William Brattle, who was a tutor, a treasurer, and a fellow at Harvard University. 
We also know that several of Harvard's presidents who lived in Wordsworth House, which is still standing on campus today, owned enslaved people of African origins, among them Venus, Bila, and Juba. That's an excerpt from the video that accompanies the Harvard report. In this clip, Harvard fellow Christopher D. E. Willoughby tells the story of an African teenage boy who was later dissected and studied by a Harvard professor. Now, this part right here, just, just listen to this part. Stormon is a particularly tragic figure. He's only 17 years old. At the end of about six months to a year of being on display, he takes his own life. He hangs himself. But Stormon's tragedy doesn't end with his death. When Stormon kills himself, they give his body to Harvard. Harvard faculty member Jeffries Wyman conducted a dissection of Stormon's body. And they also made a set of casts of his body remains in the Harvard Peabody Museum collections. His skeleton is turned into a teaching tool. They say it's left in the care, I mean care, what irony, of Professor Louis Agassiz. Stormon is measured and put in a linear position anatomically between whites and great apes. So not only is his body being destroyed, He's also being turned into this point of data to prove his own inferiority. Again, an excerpt from the video with the new Harvard. I can't get and he, I don't, he hung himself. Well, um, I don't know. Maybe so. But I'm not surprised by that. Like I said, did the same thing to them. <laughs> so it is what it is. Did the same thing to them. Yeah, dehumanized them. We didn't study, may turn their bodies into that and st study their body. Yeah. No, they didn't. What do you mean? You know for sure they did that. They studied their body, how their body worked. I don't know, Travis. Okay. But I do know they did definitely turn them into uh, leather shoes and stuff too. Leather coats. They did the same thing. Some things are just passed down to genetics and they re repeat it back. It's going to bounce back again. That's all. But are you, is, I'm, I'm not shocked by what they did. What's that book, uh, The Delectable Negro? You ever heard of that book? Mm hmm So you read, you, you see that and it's just like, ah, you know what they're capable of. But the fact that they still have his skeletal and his, his they use him in, <laughs> in courses and stuff is insane. You would think they would be like, well, this is a crazy history. Maybe we should just bury this person and go and get fake stuff like everybody else do. Shameless nation. Shameless nation. Hey, there's just no no shame. It's just it is what it is. All right. I'm not gonna read this article either. I'm just gonna make a point about it. You read this one? No, I need yeah. Hold on, let me uh hold on. Um Now, once again, this is the right wingers for a perception of certain things. See here what they said. They said reparations aren't about justice. They're an act of revenge. How so? He goes on. And he talks about how reparation discussion became mainstream as it is today. He gives that credit to Colin Hossie Coates and his that thing he wrote. They said he's the one who brought the discussion to the main stage <clears throat> as far as it being something people be willing to talk about as an actual political issue. Well, he just disappeared. Well, he said he had to get up out of there because he said he was getting death threats. He didn't like the pressure. Matter of fact, I remember when he was on Twitter, <clears throat> he got into a back and forth with, um, what's the professor name that was at, was he at Yale or Harvard, one of them? Cornell West. Cornell West. He got into a back and forth with Dr. Cornell West. About what? I forgot what it was about. It was about something. And he ended up deleting his account. And everybody was like, damn. Everybody. So Carnell had people calling him a bully and all that stuff. He's like, I'm not a bully. This is just debate. You're supposed to go and really test your ideas on stuff. I didn't think, <laughs> I didn't think he would delete his account. 
that's when he just left social media. Apparently, he said he just didn't like the attention he was getting. He wanted to be about his work. He didn't want to have to constantly, you know, go back and forth with people and defend what he said. So he kind of left social media and stuff. But I guess he comes back in here and there or whatever. So this person in his article is making the point that it's not really fair that you would want reparations, that that's not what it's about. about. That reparation would only put a bomb underneath race relations. And I'm thinking like, who cares? There's no race relations. In this, it's Everything in this country when it comes to race relations is fake. When people do get along with somebody else, it's just a cover. Because the second something racial happened, it's a quick divide immediately. So that means it's fake. So he's saying that you that you shouldn't want reparations because white people are going to be upset. Pretty much. But black people are walking around here upset because they're not they haven't been given their due justice and their repairs. So it's okay if you feel some type of way, but if we feel some type of way, you should be scared. Yeah. He said uh, in the recent years, the claim of systematic racism has become an all encompassing explanation for everything the radical left once done. This movement looks like a complex problems and presents a simple answer. Racism because of white supremacy. As I researched the, these problems for my last book, I did wonder whether anyone claiming to speak out or speak about reparation had done any real thinking on it. For instance, today in America, no, with no one talking about, we are no longer talking about a group of people who did uh, a wrong paying, who did wrong paying compensation to people who, to whom a wrong was done. We are talking about a group of people who look like a group of people who did wrong in the past, making a vast wealth transfer to another group of people who look like a group of people who a wrong was done, black Americans. Why do he only specify black Americans in this? You know, see that? Yeah. He didn't say the people who did wrong, white Americans, <laughs> but the people who were done wrong, black Americans. Why didn't he say that white Americans did the wrong? <laughs> see, that's, see, that's how the white, that's how the conservatives do it. They omit things. The liberals, when they say shit, they just be, they just blue, say something stupid. When they say stuff, they just omit something. They just don't say certain things and able to walk away. Uh, and it is not just the un- injustice of punishing people for working doing long before, the t- for work, for wrong, wrongs done long before their time, but the madness that comes from even thinking that such a task is performable. The transatlantic slave trade, like the far larger Arab slave trade of the same period, was only made possible because black Africans kidnapped and sold their brothers and sisters into slavery. I find it funny when they use that term brothers and sisters in this context. <laughs> we know this from the historical records from the memoirs of those of whom it, this was done. Like a remarkable 18th century slave, you know who he is. Some people at the time, including Valer, noted that the thing, one, only thing worse than the treatment of some Africans by Europeans was the behavior of some Africans to their fellow Africans. Then he talked about this woman here and how this, this whole thing about systematic racism is, you know, whatever it is. Basically, the whole article, when he said the war on the West, he means the war on white people. He basically feels that reparation will be the destruction of the West. It it needs to be dis- that, destruction. This, the whole article, pretty much, is him saying reparation would destroy the West. And that the only reason why people are asking for this and even making this a thing worth noting is because it's the West that did it. Basically, he also he made sure to bring up the Arab slave trade. So he's like, why not ask for reparation from them? Well, and I, I will be admit I've never heard that nobody even say that. Because where are the people? They're still in the there's there's there, there's still little pockets of those black people that are still in the Arab countries. Yeah, but he's saying he's but saying, they're not asking for it. Well, he's saying they should. <laughs> We're asking for it. <laughs> We're not talking about the Arab slave trade. We're talking about the transatlantic slave trade. We're talking about the black peoples of America. See, y'all always like to point, uh, throw rocks and hide your finger and point uh, things at other people. We're not talking about it. We're talking about you. That's the problem. <laughs> the lineage-based reparations battle has only just uh, has only one just outcome. So this person went through. I'm not gonna read this article either. I read it already. You read this one? <laughs> you didn't get through none of these. <laughs> didn't make it this far. <laughs> you didn't even make it this far. Mm-mm. Okay. Narc. <laughs> so he went we in. We know if they involved in anything, then they we know who they go for. Yeah, he went in all that. He's on the issue of linear-based reparation, ongoing ethnocide. The growing grassroots push for reparations has been tainted by an uh, uh, erroneous narrative of questioning who the descendants of the U.S. channel slavery are and how this black population can possibly possibly be distinguished from the current black immigrant population. This ahistorical narrative is extremely dismissive and rooted in inherent disrespect of American freedmen. We write this as a member of the grassroots American freedom and reparations community. 
A so-called legacy organization mm-hmm. like National African American Reparation Commission, NARC, spoke out against lineage-based reparations in a recent press release. This is the second time they're addressing who qualifies for an American freedom of reparations. Did we not hear about this the first time because NARC is only interested in maintaining their position as gatekeepers in the community? Who gave NARC and the affiliated organizations mentioned in the press release permission to assert themselves as the leaders of the, of the movement? National Coalition of Blacks and for Reparations in America, Black Lives Matter, Moving for Black Lives. So wait, Black Lives Matter? I'm about to say there's a M, uh, MFBL, Movement for Black Lives. Yeah. When did t- that come about? I told you this, Black Lives Matter is split up in different LLC. So you got Move for Black Lives, Black Lives Matter, Black, Li- Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. You got Pack with Black, Black Lives Matter, Pla- Pack. You got like wait, five or six wait, of wait, them. Wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> National Congress of Black Women. Hold on, let me, just, let me keep reading. Okay. The NAACP, National Urban League, Rainbow Push Coalition. You know what that is. Uh, National Congress of Black Women, National Council of Negro Women, and the National Action Network. So, uh, Black Lives Matter is already a black woman. What do you mean? They they, they said everything with black men. The the men in their mission statement. That's who they were, their audience was for. Yeah. So damn, there's three different uh, groups for <laughs> black women. Damn. When well, they if they started, it, I mean, it's there. So, but why y'all always got to be separate? I don't understand. Hey, if you make it, you build it. You can make it name what you want to name it. It is what it is. Uh, what is uh, did NARC present their perspective as the mass masses of American freedmen to uh, obtain any consensus and truth? NARC's letter is rife with common misconceptions and obtuse questions used to muddy the righteous justice claim for American freedmen. Then he goes to the case is clear. Queen <laughs> Queen Mother Moore, who was leading figure in the reparation struggle in the 20th century, she authored my, Why Reparations in 1963. The pamphlet is an extensive account of the atrocities American freedmen endured during slavery throughout the Reconstruction era. He also writes a timeline on direct reparations payments throughout history. Queen Mother Moore's language and specificity of the people harmed and the sentence who demand to repair was very clear. Here's a powerful message, uh, passage from the Why Reparations. So she, he went on to show that. And he just pretty much went through and pretty much <laughs> attacked NARC <laughs> article saying how they, they're just trying to destroy this movement, trying to ask up to it because they have their own idea of how it should work. Um, Gate trying keepers. to co-opt the whole energy of the whole situation. Gatekeepers. Yeah, pretty much. They're playing as gatekeepers, making sure you ask for what they think you should get. What do you think about it? What do you think about it? <laughs> that situation? <laughs> it's just really, it's really sad that, you know, you have all these boulets and different groups that literally control the black community. Like that's why you have your Al Sharptons, your Ben Crumps, all these people that were happy to something black people, they jump out in the front and take control of the narrative and all that stuff to keep other people from rising up and being leaders. Yeah. It's sad. It is. It's been going on for how long? <sighs> Since the late eighteen hundreds, maybe. Maybe even before that, honestly, but definitely the late eighteen hundreds. And I guarantee you, it's lineage based. Passing down this gatekeeping boulets. Well, yeah, we know we already know that a lot of these colleges and frats. Morehouse is we always say Morehouse and Spelman, they the top two. Because they're a lot of them are your mother or your father went to this school, so you go to this. That's pretty much how you get in. Which is how Harvard and um, so you've had Harvard and Yale and all those other places beef- tend to work. Now I want to show this since we brought it, we're gonna talk about the reparation thing for a little bit. You see this? Now listen to what she asked Charlemagne. Um, so you've had beefs with Lil Mama, Monique, Cassie, Azalea Banks, your own co-host, Angela Yee. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. Beefs is a strong word. You've maligned black women. So why do you hate black women exactly? No, I love black women. Mm. And I mean, I guess I can see where people would say that if you want to take those three or four times. Three or four and times. And put them together in a montage. Four, come on. The following was paid for by Z-Ways America. Why wouldn't I get what legends get? Because their resume recently is okay. better. You can just so prove it on with, paper. With music industry people say I'm dope all the time. Really? You um, sell so the, be honest. Can't ask Brandy what that mouth do, though. No, you cannot. No. <laughs> that's a her. compliment. Don't worry about Right it. now, you're like a character to yourself. But you're the person that's promoting that. Come on, man. Yeah, all the totally different. I know. I, re- I Well, yes, you're a different person every year. <laughs> Come on. Isn't that good, though? It's almost like they're ashamed of, you know, 
their past. Shouldn't you, shouldn't we always constantly evolve? What's the point of doing new year, new me? I agree with you, right? Like, I think that you can't be like locked into your own past, but then it's like, let's say I get paid $5 a day to punch you in the face. Mm -hmm. And I punch you in the face every day for 10,000 days and I make $50,000. And then on the 10,001 day, I say, I will not punch anyone in the face. What if I give the money back? So would you say to this camera that you're pledging to donate 100% of your salary to black women's reparations? 100%? 100%. I will, I will, I will pledge that I will help uh, black women make a lot of money. That's now, this was said in a joking context. But I can't help but believe, because this show, we are in what these shows are doing. But do you not get something from that? black woman's reparations yeah sometimes you just <laughs> I, I just don't understand it's like they want to be their own no, I'm not gonna say group. they it's a it's a that sector they choose to yeah they want to be their own uh race of people because you get reparations from someone who did damage to you or oppress you. And they feel like the black man is oppressive towards them, which, which is, I don't understand. But, you know. Y'all have it far easier. I just thought that was a slick way that they did that. It may mean nothing. It may just me be reading into it more than I should. But Because what Kevin Samuels be saying, what, what Kevin Samuels said uh, about the whole uh, weight thing and all these other things, White men, they've been saying that to... Not just white men. Men in general. Uh, mm. Middle Eastern men. Yeah, they've been saying that shit. It is what it is, man. Uh, hold on, thing. All right. See this right here? What happens to black Twitter when Musk takes over? Black Twitter uses our word that Elon Musk, 44 billion takeover, will open the floodgates to harassment. So they had a... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to read this article, obviously. They had a, they had a Twitter Spaces, where they had a bunch of white people sitting on a panel talking about Black Twitter. But a couple of years ago, they were saying it was racist. Why is no, it saying it's Black Twitter? Those are not the same groups. Okay. People that were calling it racist were the conservatives, or the right wingers, whatever you want to call them. They were saying it was racist to have this idea of a Black Twitter. So separate. why do white people care so much about Black Twitter? Because Black Twitter influences politics. Black Twitter. I, Black Twitter gets uh, overused. Not everything that a black person tweet is a part of Black Twitter. Black Twitter is just black people who just so happen to tweet, and Twitter is such a it's such a small platform that you just see the same people every day, even if you're following them or not. You see the same people every day talking about the same damn thing. It's just a it's a cycle on there. That's why I don't be on there, but like twice, I be on there like three times a week just because I want information. Something happened, I go there, get information because it's just a circle. It's just a circle. I started to tweet a little, a little bit more recently, but it, it's just, it's just a circle. But the fact that you had a panel of white people, mostly white people, talking about Black Twitter as this is such a threat. It's like so. Let's say he did change something where the idea of Black Twitter just disappeared. Black people just left Twitter. Okay. And, okay. So what? There's other platforms you can go. It's his on. platform. Yeah, because when it was. When it was Twitter before, and they they blocking certain stuff. YouTube, they blocking stuff, certain content. It's, it's a private platform. They can do what they want. If they don't want you on their platform, they can do it. But now they can't. So now you want freedom. People to say what they want to say on the platform and be quote unquote protected as have free speech and right. Now you're okay with that, but before you weren't. So they once again using <laughs> using black people as a bullet in the gun to shoot at somebody they don't like which is what they always do they don't like elon musk so shoot him and make him make him racist even though he probably is they they, they just use, so were the rest of them exactly they just like to use black people as pawns and we allow it it's just insane. that's what they do you think most people tell them to mind their business yeah now watch this right here this is just a crazy story we were talking about the weed thing, the legalize, legalization of weed in New York that Adams wanted to do where he wants people to grow it on projects. On the is, roofs. Which is going to be majority black areas, more than likely. And we were saying, how you going to lock me up and then want to grow it on my building a few years later? I imagine somebody who went to prison in the early 2000s. They got out this year. 
they you know got a little like, job, yeah, got an up. apartment, and the damn mayor saying he gonna grow weed on his apartment. He like I went to prison for this. Why did I get locked up? I went to prison for this. Now you're growing it on my roof. Imagine that. But they changed the rules. You just gotta change with it. No, not chips or a candy bar. That comes after what you get out of this vending machine. I use it probably like four or five times. The voice of an anonymous customer and the one who took this viral video of how the marijuana vending machine works. He was selling like souvenirs. That's code, obviously. Machine took credit cards, even Apple Pay. It's an excellent service. I think that it just got out of here. No. A black man <laughs> put a vending machine outside his apartment to sell weed. Genius. It's genius. And of course, dumbass is snitched, recorded and put it on TikTok. He got caught and now he's getting arrested. Why would they put that on TikTok? I don't know. This it, was a, it was a woman, wasn't it? Yes, it got out of hand. Out of hand. You said you went to it like five times. So why, are you, why, why are you recording this? What got out of hand? Too many people was using it, I guess. He was making that's, too much that's money. That's none of your damn business. <laughs> it, it's crazy. But the point I'm making is, why would he get arrested for selling? I thought it was legal. Oh, the government could get. Didn't I tell you when they legalized it, it, didn't, it, it wasn't going to stop niggas from getting arrested? Because you still have to go through a certain background check and all this other stuff to be able to register for it. So now he's been arrested for selling weed. When it's legal to whoever, it's legal. whoever put up that video, she should get her ass whooped. It's, it's always somebody to do too much. Why are you recording this? This is in a hood. It's chill. Just go buy it and go Boy, watch that's the day. What happened when you have other people in your hood? And it was genius. You put a weed vending machine. You just walk doo, 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 credit card, Apple Pay. Back. Genius. But somebody else will come up with that idea. I guarantee you. Oh yes, somebody, some company now will come out and have them put it in stores. But somebody gonna take the, that idea. But they'll do it the quote unquote legal way, and they'll make millions. <laughs> Crazy. Once again, they changed the rules. Rules for D, not for me. All right, let's go here now. Since we're talking about changes in the rules. Karen Jean Pierre to replace Saki as White House press secretary. Jean Pierre, the current, uh, the principal deputy press secretary, will become the first openly gay person and first black woman to hold the role of White House press secretary. The White House said that Jean Pierre would assume the position on May 13th. Oh, poor. Uh, they didn't mention that she's immigrant, ain't she? Yes, she is an immigrant. So she figured all She's the Haitian. boxes. She figured she passed all the boxes. Immigrant, black, woman, gay. Simone Sanders did all that and they still didn't let you be <laughs> White House press secretary. But it is controversy though. Look at this. Biden new press secretary sparks conflict of interest concerns over the relationship with CNN's Suzanne Mavo. And of course she's with a white woman. The woman worked for CNN. So wait, the, the, wait, the White House press secretary is dating a CNN affiliate. Like not, that shouldn't be allowed. Right. I, I, we know what happened. We know what happened. We know that some of these press secretaries be sleeping with the reporters, but this shouldn't be coming. I mean, she got to go home and she's going to tell her wife or girlfriend something that's going to be reported on CNN. But at this point, CNN MSNBC is pretty much direct mouthpieces for the white house. So it ain't no difference. Same way. All of them are mouthpieces for the CIA. <laughs> so she got the job oh simone sanders and she uh, yeah she's on uh msnbc was, i don't know what she doing was she on was she on cnn plus i can't remember might have been if she's on cnn plus that's, that's messed if she's on cnn plus they dropped the ass off <laughs> but yeah that's uh the new white house press secretary so it is what it is go over here I want to show this now if you're talking about her and she's Haitian Caribbean countries are asking for their independence and reparations too copying black Americans
why did it take so long for them to get away from underneath the, the queen as the public representative, state representative? But at least they're doing it now. Now, this had to be eight months ago. Yes, when we were talking about uh, the president of Haiti being assassinated. I told you that the term West Indian was what was really was purported by uh, uh, quote unquote Latinos. They're in the city. How is Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic right next to Haiti and Jamaica? But one is called West Indian and one is called Latino. I remember, I remember we had that argument. I said they're all Latino. I always thought that Jamaican, I always thought that Jamaicans, Barbados, uh, that those people, uh, Virgin Islands, those are West Indians. They were called Puerto West Ricans, Indians. Dominicans, Brazilians, no, Venezuelans, all those, they are Hispanics and Latinos. Yeah, I know, but I'm making a point. They called them West Indian because they seen as just black. Exactly. So, But the, they, the, them calling themselves West Indian is because they just simply pushed them away. And re, they're Latinos. So this right here, it's a uh, Haitians in Haiti don't consider themselves Latinos, so why did this random wave of y'all calling each other Latinos start? I don't, it's not, I remember seeing this uh, when, a younger, when, I, when I was younger, hearing people who were Haitian, Jamaicans call themselves Latino. I've never heard a, a heard Haitian that. person call themselves Latino. For the most part, they call, they call themselves West Indian, but I remember hearing Latino. I remember, they say, they look, say West Indies. When I was in my teens, I used to, you know, when, when I was younger and I would get on the internet, I was like the typical young person. You just, you're looking for stuff, looking for information. And you start getting into debates with people. I was one of those people that got into debates a lot. And I remember getting into debates and I would get into debates with people who were referring to themselves as Latino. Well, clearly she, she don't, she said that when did this start? Cause she never well, heard no, of it. Somebody asked a question to her. Oh. So let's see what she got. Oh, she called herself Latino. Let's listen to her. Haitians don't consider themselves Latino. It's because half of y'all are racist. Half of y'all are colorist. Told you. They consider themselves Latino. They just say they uh, a West Af West Indian because they, what the hell is a West Indian? Think about it for a second. What the hell is a West Indian? A uh, indigenous person. So, that, so they're calling you indigenous. So there's East Indians. We know what an East Indian is. The dot, middle of the head dot people. So why are they calling you a West Indian? That's India. Yeah, that's in East Indian. Yeah. So why are they calling you a West Indian? When I was younger and I didn't know nothing, when people would say West Indian, I thought there was Indians, dot people, who lived in the West. No. So I knew what an East Indian was. So I was like, well, a, a, I don't know a West Indian. you got that. Look, I, I <laughs> learned things. Let me learn. I took my time to learn. I thought a West Indian was an Indian person who lived in the West. I thought they were Latinos, just black. But let's finish. And even though it's proven that we are Latino, look at how many people in my comments are saying that we're not. Most of y'all hate us, and honestly, we don't care to call ourselves Latino to people that don't even accept us. So that's why most of us would rather call ourselves African and Black before we call ourselves Latino, because y'all are one of the most toxic communities to be a part of. There's a reason why y'all consider Brazilians Latino and not Haitians, even though neither of them speak Spanish. Because most Brazilians have a lighter complexion, and we are darker. If I went to any country in Africa right now, they would welcome me with open arms. But if I went to certain Latin American countries, I would get the side eye. That's the difference. That's the reason why we don't claim Latino, even though we are. And I know this is TikTok, so I have to say that because y'all take everything out of context. Because when I say some Latinos are racist, some of y'all are going to be like, oh, you're racist. I said some, not all. You know what? I just had to show that because we had this thing like eight months ago. I told you they consider themselves Latino. I remember, I remember having these debates and talking about this, and they would say we're Latino. They just don't call themselves that because racism, so they say West Indian or African or black. They consider themselves Latino. But now, they don't say that no more. They just say Caribbean. That's, that's even newer. Even though it's not a new word, I know they called itself Caribbean for a while. But the idea of being Caribbean has replaced West Indian and uh, Latino now. They just say I'm West Indian. I mean, if they say I'm Caribbean. So that was just a, <laughs> I just wanted to bring that out because I was like, I knew I wasn't crazy. All right. All right. That's it for that. Last up, I'm going to go through this.
Here we go again. Another fire. Walmart Distribution Center in Indiana to close after massive warehouse fire. A Walmart warehouse in Avon, Indiana is closing following a massive fire in March. In a letter to the Indiana Department of Workforce Development, Walmart said the damage is too significant to reopen for the foreseeable future. Every last one of these fire, fires, this is the same thing. It won't be open for the foreseeable future or it's closed indefinitely. Well, um, oh, and if you talk about this now, you're a conspiracy theorist. If you say somebody burning this stuff, you're a conspiracy. Th- Bro, it's not an accident. February and March, February through March, all of a sudden, all these now February through. Well, yeah, we extended it to May now. Well, I don't know if any fires. Yeah, you're right. So February through uh, May, all these random fires, the food plants, fertilizer plants, random. <laughs> Oh, just it? an accident. This crazy accidental stuff. Ain't been no farms yet, right? Well, I haven't seen any farms. Set no farms. That's next. See, farms, you can't touch farms because that's people that own that. And them farmers got shotguns and dogs out there. So they see, they, <laughs> <laughs> they protect Lock the land. Lock and load. So yeah, they, 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 wouldn't, they wouldn't go out there anyway. Let me go ahead and show um, the video that they got of the blaze. Blaze of glory. And like I said, now they're telling you that you're, it's a conspiracy. This is not real. This is just people making stuff Oh, they up. dropped a bomb off. <laughs> a missile. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, like this is this is a significant, this is a huge fire. Yes. This ain't no little back of the building, something caught on fire. You get the, uh, you get the, the, the fire The whole thing. fucking building is on fire. It, it, the whole thing is, a, which means either something exploded how how did the fire spread that far and wide before the uh, fire department got there? As yep. in, that means something was set ablaze to make sure it all burnt down. Like it was put around the whole building. But, you know. But, you know, accidents happen. Conspiracy. It's a conspiracy theory. Fire damages food processing, food processing plant in northwest Fresno. This is May 2nd. An investigation is underway to determine what sparked a fire at a food processing plant in northwest Fresno. The fire broke out in the uh, Salido's plant in Shaw Avenue and Golden State Boulevard Sunday night. Several employees were evacuated in the building where firefighters put out the flames. Officials, officials with the business have not said what, what was damaged. Hours later, firefighters responded to an uh, a, a ammonia leak at the same building. Uh, it is unclear whether the leak was related to the fire. No one was hurt. Mm. So an ammonia leak... Oh, it, it might have been a leak that led to this blaze that burned it all down. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, this is what you brought out. California declares unprecedented water restrictions amid drought. Residents have been warned to scale down <laughs> their water usage this summer as critical shortage loom. So they're letting you know. Fuck around this summer if you want to. And well, <laughs> well, we know white people have bath days. <laughs> so and the niggas is homeless, so they should be okay. Damn, that's really brutal. The <laughs> white people don't watch, and the niggas can't watch because they're homeless. Damn. Well, that's, you know, that's How you have a bath day? Bruh. Bath day is every day. <laughs> <clears throat> a bath, you, mean, you know, they don't wash their legs either, and they said that uh, well, something you wash too much, you damage your skin. <laughs> oh, that's why they be having rust on their legs. Rust build up. <laughs> I made it once in a millennium prolonged drought. And the feet be dirty. Let me tell you something. Every <laughs> every white person I see when they had their feet out, their feet be dirty. I'm like, how are your feet that dirty? And they can't say it because you know black people feet is pink, white underneath. So you get a light brown sometimes when a nigga will get real really dark. But that's about <laughs> yellow. As, yeah, it's a dark as it get. <laughs> Uh, fueled in a climate crisis, one of the largest water distribution agencies in the United States is warning 6 million California residents to cut back on their water usage this summer or risk dire shortages. The skeletal restrictions is unprecedented in the history of Metropolitan Water District of South California, Southern California, which serves 20 million people and has been in operation for nearly a century. So, look, so that's our... Look at that. <laughs> 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 That you, you know that uh that um uh, that uh lake they got over there uh-huh. and the, you see the water line yeah and it's like 
<laughs> the water line is well. Ridiculous. The issue is they also get uh they get water from Nevada. What I'm looking at. Yeah, they uh is it Lake Tahoe? I don't know. I'm gonna say I don't uh, think it's Lake Tahoe. California water line. You can't spell what the damn. <laughs> I'm just it's typing California. Quick. Whatever, nigga. They said really California. <laughs> is this what you meant, nigga? I'm trying to just type it in quick. Um, yeah, that's it. Lake. Uh, I don't know. If this is it. But we we can look at it. it don't matter. Look at this. <laughs> like you know, I know people gonna find it hard to believe. But California, that whole area we used to be the ocean. Yeah. And you could tell it used to be the ocean because you go to the Grand Canyon and you see like these tall uh, mountains and you feel like, it feel like there should be something here. Like something's supposed to be here. That's what the Grand Canyon is. It's water. <laughs> the ocean should be there. All those states, that should be water. That's why they're going through this drought. Look at all that. Look at that. Hey, it's getting bad. They, that curses. Hey, it's getting bad, man. There's um, no even in even in uh in in, in uh Nevada, it's supposed to be snowing up there in the mountain. There's no snow. They're having less snow. Well, you know there was water wars starting in um Oregon. There yeah. Were two, there was two. We, city, we had a video of water wars. There was two cities in Oregon. Uh, there was one one uh place wanted to send. It wasn't just two cities. I think it was a city and like some yeah. organization, some group. They wanted to send the money to a creek so for the fish for the environment. The other one is sending sending water to the people so they can you know use the water for the yeah for the people farmers too so it, yeah in farming so it became oh it was it was three yeah the farmers wanted the water the uh, environmentalists wanted the water and then the city needed the water and yeah. it's like well at some point the person with the biggest pocket is gonna get it yeah because Professor uh, uh, um, uh, Griffin yeah Professor Griff yeah he had a video on water, water wars, wars and yeah. he was saying how. America is no longer be going to be going after oil. They're well, going to be going water. to people's country, <laughs> stealing, water. stealing water. I'm like, well, damn, can they just get water from the east side of the damn country, the east coast? Well, the east need the water. So you tell me you're going to get it. So we already got half the population or half the country on this, using this water. Washington you want the other State, half to use all the water? Washington, Washington State is fine. Yeah. It's below. There's Oregon, Washington, Nevada. Arizona. Arizona. Colorado. I don't know about Colorado. I think they just might get away from it. Drought. Well, the Colorado have a lot of snow. Yeah. Fall. So they might be okay. <laughs> By the way, that damn uh, California and uh, Nevada and the uh, Oregon. Yeah, it's gonna be rough. Rough. So y'all, black people are gonna have to start taking. Gonna start having having bath days. No, as we said before, <laughs> get to the south. Now you talking about niggas? You said uh, no. West Coast, go nigga, to the go Midwest. <laughs> Why can't they come to the South? Because the Midwest gotta, you know, train them, <laughs> and then when they done training them, we'll you. have them come with them, and we'll retrain them all. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, over five hundred kg, uh, kg of cocaine found in coffee delivery for Nespresso. Nespresso. Where's this at? Uh, this is in uh, hold up, Switzerland. Yeah, cocaine estimated to be worth 50 million Swiss francs have been found in container and coffee bean bags. You know, no one season. of these days, I hope I don't get a delivery and it be a box of Coke. Now, this is the same <laughs> thing happened with uh, that bank. Um, not bank of America. Chase. Yeah, Chase Bank. Or J.P. J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan. When they had That's all Chase. that dope on the damn boat. So this is not an accident. Like I said, these corporations are in bed with drug dealers. Big time drug dealers, kingpins. Most of them get their drugs in through corporations. They bring the drugs in for them. They get the back end. They get a little dump off in the uh, reserves. And it's, it's fed, it's uh, filtered through the company to clean it. So what was their excuse why they found this cocaine in the... They never give an excuse. Oh, okay. So Police were informed on Monday night that staff found an unidentified white substance while unloading bags of coffee beans that had just arrived from Brazil. The police said in the statement, an analysis showed the substance was cocaine. The sub... The, sub, uh, the substance in question did not come into contact with any of our products or production equipment used to make our products, Espresso said in an email statement. 
So you mean to tell me <laughs> they didn't know? <laughs> okay. Well, hell, was this all the setup, and then the police officers pick it up and then drop it off and give it to them? That probably is true. Cause the cops was in with Harlem them. Nights. <laughs> oh yeah, that's how it go to. Now to this mess. CDC reissues mass recommendation on plane and public transportation across America as much as the Northeast moves into high transmission category. Just because you reissued it, I mean, it's going to be brought back. It's over. It's over. At least for now. Until they, I don't think it's over. Until they drop that other bug and shit really get pop off. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Or they wait for people to start dropping. You know what? I, didn't, I forgot to say this with Kevin Samuel. There was people that were saying that he died of heart problems because of, remember people brought up the Red Bull. Other people said there was a, probably a false story, said that he died from fentanyl and cocaine. What? Somebody actually said that, fentanyl and cocaine. Then somebody else said, uh, did he get the jab? And I stay, I stay right there. Those are three questions that need to be answered. <laughs> Or he just simply died from cardiac failure. Maybe that might be it. Might just be an old man. Or was he, you know, like we said, that Latina? Oh, that Viagra. That Viagra was that what did he it? He took a little too much, and too much was hot. He had a long night, and you know, I don't know, but it is what it is. I just want to know: Did he take that thing? Did he, you know, did he take the jab? That's what, I would just like to know that. Let's go to the next one. FDA limits J and J COVID vaccine due to rare blood clot risk. Remember, they came out and said they came out and said we do not recommend J and J. They said that, but people were still taking it because it only takes one shot and it's not um, what's we call it? It's not that new. What do they call it? You know, we know uh, Moderna and Pfizer are mRNA. Johnson Johnson not mRNA. It's the standard vaccine that you get. So they came out and said, we don't recommend Johnson Johnson. So now that they're, now they're limiting it. So now people probably were still taking it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we don't want you to take that one no more. Because they're saying it's m- more dangerous. So we're going to limit it to try and c- coax some of you to go over here and take this mRNA. Pfizer and Moderna. So we know particularly. Pfizer, Pfizer. Pfizer. We know they money long, so that's why they're able to get away with stuff like that. So, <sighs> Vaccinated seniors make up growing share thank you, of COVID-19 deaths, Washington Post. Well, they were the first ones that started getting vaccinated, weren't they? So they're saying now majority of the COVID-related deaths are older vaccinated people. Well, next it'll be the uh, next group that took it and then <laughs> another group. <laughs> Look, oh Lord, Lou, five through five year olds to eleven year olds, they the last group to it's sound sad. heartless drop. It is what it is, man. I don't know what we could do. We got family members. And when you tell people and they don't listen, nothing you, you can them, do. All you can do is love them. But anyway, man, I think we've held you on long enough. We're gonna move on. Held now. me on. No, the listeners, man. Oh. I'm like worry about holding you on. You got anything else you want to say? Thanks for viewing the channel. And thanks for the support. Uh, ain't going to mix it up for nothing a little bit, is you? <clears throat> All right, man. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hopefully you enjoy it. Y'all be safe. All praise to the most high. And peace, man. <laughs>